Hello, welcome to the Bowplay YouTube channel. Open mic. Uh, hell yeah, 199. We're way the hell up there where we're at. Yeah, 199. Somebody has their YouTube. Yeah. Not me, man. I know it's not me. I'm it's good. Me. There we go. I think it's it's okay now. Anyway, today we're jumping back into case of dispatch calls. Today we're going to be on uh, November six, channel six. Uh, this uh, series of calls for this day or for this channel and day is just shy of you know three hours. Of course, as we've seen. Uh, that's we've whittled that most of these down to uh, you know a couple hours because there's so much irrelevant stuff in it. I just skipped through it so that we're going to continue doing that. Anyway, hope everyone's doing well. This uh, well really nice uh, day here in Southwest Michigan. If we actually hit, I think close to 70. <laughs> Don't even say it, Susan. Don't even say it. You're probably 85. 75. Oh. Now that's getting a little warm. And it's warm here today. I guess I guess better than twenty five, but yeah. Yeah. Did you were you guys affected by the high winds and all that? I saw. Oh God, yeah, yeah. Super but no tornadoes. Wind. But no tornadoes. No, no, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. I, I know exactly the feeling about that. I don't know if you guys remember me telling you, but. Uh, a few weeks ago, we had a really hard hailstorm, and there was actually a, a tornado uh, spotted not probably uh, eight, ten miles from where we live now. But we got some pretty damaging hail. Anyway, uh, we had some roof damage. I mean, it's nothing major. It's not like, like destroyed it or anything. But anyway, um, and many people in our neighborhood did. And I got to get, we got a little leak. It rained the other day and we had uh -oh. a little leak show up. Yep. So I got to get the people out here to get that straightened out. Mm -hmm. I, and we had had rain before and, and so, I mean, since, since then, but I mean, that guy's been pretty busy. So anyway, got to get that taken care of. There's All right. definitely been a change in the weather. Oh, absolutely. Huge change. Yeah. We talked, we talked about that. I mean, I just, I know, I mean, I'm not from here originally, but I just know what we've experienced the last, you know, 18 years being here, and it's, it's crazy. It's just absolutely crazy how much has changed. Mm -hmm. I bet sure, I bet Cherie, you know, where she's at, uh, you know, in the nor upper northeast, has probably it's, seen a change as well. Yeah, it's ever since Easter, it's been different for sure and a lot of green and daffodils blooming and so spring-like wow well i mean just you know the, the winter here was i mean it got oh. cold but yeah we didn't get we didn't have near the type of winter we usually have right no i mean it got cold there for a while but yeah it's definitely different anyway let me pop this on screen anybody got anything they want to mention before we get rolling here No, not, not really. me. I haven't really been much on social media today, so I don't know if there's anything going on that I haven't seen yet. <laughs> there, probably, there probably is, but anyway. Um, I can't think of any announcements. I know Doc, it's Doc, uh, Dr. Suckman's, the time changed in Australia, so it's uh, really early for him, but I know he's going to try to jump in when he gets situated. Um here later it'd be later this morning for him so anyway all right let's uh let's get this started and I, i'll i'm probably not going to do it every call or but every few minutes i'm gonna i'll try to keep everyone informed because i know it's really difficult to see the time on these different files in here because it's so small but i'll try to keep everybody i kind of apprised to what time it is as going through this question if there's any questions in the Live chat, please put a cue. Uh, guys, if you need me to stop, replay something, just let me know. All right, I, here we go. Time 
calling my county sheriff's department. Yeah, this is Lieber Schmidt again. Mm -hmm. See, uh, my apartment here, I don't want nobody touching it. If my family uh, checks through it, does that have to go through the court? I'm sorry, what, what was that? My uh, my stuff in my apartment is mm -hmm. I'm evicted. Nobody can touch that in the uh, apartment I'm going to skip, skip through this. Uh, this is about two minutes after midnight. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. Kelly, my county sheriff's department. Hey, it's Chris. Hey, do we have an eviction notice for Leroy Schmidt floating around? Maybe not. I'm gonna have Jerry work with him. Yep. Yep. Are we going into the seventh, Jack? Kelly McConey, nine one one. Hi. Uh... This is the midnight. Uh, midnight on the sixth. Okay. That's when it so started. we're going into the seventh. No. Or okay. No, no. All this right. is early, early, early morning. Correct. Gotcha. Thank you. Yeah. Yep. And we're at 20 minutes after midnight. And probably several of these in the beginning are going to be irrelevant because they're middle of the night. I locked my daughter in the tr in my truck. I locked the keys in the truck. Um, I'm at High Coast State Park. I was just okay, wondering. Okay, moving on. Is that I've never locked six W. Great. Not too much. My mother. Hey, Jesse. Fran, what's your, what's your cell phone number? Uh, 841. 841. 6258. 6258. I've got the same call. Oh. Kelly, my county sheriff's department. Hey. Hey. Turn me on. I'm Diane Street. Um, he's talking to a guy that apparently was evicted from his house. Moving on. Kelly, my county sheriff's department. Hello, this is Blaine Simone. I'm calling the streets of Hoboken. Okay. Uh, did you get any calls from the area? No, I haven't. Yeah. No. Am I supposed to? I'm sorry, what? I had a lady down there tonight complaining that she stayed her in Walmart. Tonight? At 6.30 tonight. Okay, she may have called and talked to our investigator. This is the 911 center. So we really, you know, we don't talk to everyone. If you'd like, I can transfer you to the investigator's voicemail. He's not in right now, but you can leave the information with him. Okay. okay. I also, I'll tell you that just about a half an hour ago, I stopped at Taco Bell. It's only a half a block down the street. They said they saw okay. Was she in her vehicle? No, I thought... What did he say there? Uh, did you hear that skip? That was edited. He yeah, stopped it was at definitely. Taco Bell. And then yeah. There was something. I'm going to back that up a second. Cause he I've also talked before. about the Walmart. Some sorry at Walmart. Yeah. An hour ago, I stopped at Taco Bell. It's only a half a block down the street. Okay. Was she in her? Okay, it skipped files, and again, this, or yeah, the file, it switched from one file to the next, and something is removed. It just skipped right over it. This was with the real irritation of how they did this. They didn't have to do it, but they did it anyway, and it really bothers me. Yeah. Really bothers me. I mean, otherwise, you know, if they'd let these calls just record into one file, we wouldn't have, have 18,000 you know, 570 different audio files on this DVD. Right. It's ridiculous. Ridiculous, yeah. Yeah. And intentional. That, that's the other p bad part about it. Why would you do that? Why, why are you making this so difficult? Well, number one, because they can. It just, I don't know that they're hiding something, but it seems like they are. I can't prove they are, but it. this is the way it comes across to the public. Sorry. All right. If they take the time to go listen to this so they can cut out things like that, it, right. it looks suspicious. It's really shady. I mean, yeah. so it makes me want to, I mean, I, I probably wouldn't even get a response, but it makes me want to request the unedited version of the queso calls right. for this week. Because they did, they've clearly had some editing done to them. Yep. 
Yeah, what did he see at the Taco Bell? Well, that's often <laughs> that's often the uh, land of uh, erased audio. <laughs> Although we do know that, right? From somewhere, we know that they saw her in a white van with a black guy, right? Y yes, that's correct. I think that was in so, Shib I don't know Sheboygan. How, I think I think that was how in do Sheboygan. How we know it? If this call isn't um, is edited, we know it from something. Oh, because there's another call. Okay. I think that was in Sh Sh a Sheboygan Walmart. Okay. I know the wall. There's another Walmart call, but it's that's right. Taco Bell, Taco Bell call. Uh, I don't remember another Taco Bell call. Because Definitely I know remember. that uh, again, right. it was a van, right? She was in a van at Taco Bell with the black guy, right? Or am I mixing those two up? I think you're mixing them up. I, I remember she was seen at the at a Sheboygan Walmart with the black guy. Uh, but this is the right. only Taco Bell, Bell? Bell call. So that was what the that Teresa was? Yes. yes. Wow, I never yeah. heard that before. Yep. Yeah. yeah, I don't remember what day. And I think it's. Did they a ever later. go and get the CCTV? Probably not. That was on the 5th after they'd found the RAV. So. Or the sixth, whatever day it was, the fifth, I guess it was. I yeah, think I anything remember. after they found the rav, they just ignored. Well, they sure seemed like it. I mean, that guy calling, you know, uh, that lived over there on Cuss Road. That's another call, you know. He says that she showed up at his door. You know that. Yeah. Um, Cuss Road. Yep. Right, right and out of the fifth or the night of the fifth or sixth, I'm sure that call's coming, but James Crane says, Isn't that the call that Ryan tried to downplay with dispatch? Ryan, uh, I guess he means. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure he does. I don't remember that. You could be right, James. I just not remembering it. It sounds kind of familiar. Hey Duke. You gotta come up, on. Duke. Yeah, come on in. When if you get a minute, want to, whatever. All righty, let's, uh, let's continue on. We're at, um, uh, looks like 12.40 a.m. Yeah, that's really small timing. All right, here we go. Your vehicle? White van. Okay. Oh, you were right. I was right. You was right. I'm remembering it incorrectly. Thank you very much. White van with a black guy at Taco Bell. Yeah, at Walmart. I think she was just seen inside the store, wasn't she? I don't know if they Must saw have been. Vehicle. Yeah. Why wouldn't they go get the video if that gets reported? I don't understand. <laughs> well, don't, getting... don't be thinking logical like that. That's not right. Right. Yeah, it's not right. That's crazy talk. Go back on that a little bit there, Jack. If you'd like, I can transfer you to the investigator's <laughs> voicemail. He's not in right now, but you can leave the information with him. Okay. okay. I also, I'll tell you that... About a half an hour ago, I stopped at Taco Bell. It's only a half a block down the street. Okay. Was she in her vehicle? No, I thought she was in a white van. She had a black guy with her. Okay. That's interesting. Now, this is just right after midnight. And he said he just saw her earlier. And they're not leaving to go check that out like, immediately? Come on, man. Yeah. Anyway. Moving on. Okay, this is good information. If, if you don't mind, I'm going to transfer you to the investigator, and could you please leave your name and number and then let him know in detail? And I'm going to have him... Your... Yeah, where well, you can be reached. At a later time, it's fine. Your home number's fine. It's great. Could you hold on for a second? Yeah, 
Ten four. Okay, I'm going to transfer you to the investigator's voicemail. Okay. Also said it was just a half an hour ago. That's right. right. I mean, that's a hell of a lead right there. You know, get somebody why out of bed. She, why, well, yeah, or why isn't why isn't she on the radio talking to one somebody on patrol? Say, look, you need to head over. Right? Blah blah blah. Now, check it out. Yeah, yeah. Or call call Sheboygan or wherever she was. Exactly. You know, get somebody out there. That's right. You, you that a lead like that. It's been 30 minutes old. You got to get it. Leave it on the it damn out. voicemail for fuck's right. sake. <laughs> right. I agree. Excuse my French. No, no. I mean, it's almost like you know, she had a hard, fast order not to irritate anyone or that that's just how they handle things in a missing person case. She'd been missing yeah. for days now. She even says anyway. this is good information, you know. She did. Anyway, all right, moving on. Telling my county sheriff's department. gentleman who states that he Mark. Hi Mark, this is Connie in dispatch. Hi. I just got a call from a gentleman who states that he saw um Therese in Walmart in Sheboygan today. And about a half hour ago mm -hmm. she saw or he knows somebody that saw her drive through the drive through of Taco Bell. And she was in a white van driving a white van with a black male subject as a passenger. Okay. And someone was in the back seat. And I told him to, uh, that I was transferring him to your voicemail and... Where is he from? Um, Sheboygan. And he had called the Sheboygan Police Department and he called me and said, did Sheboygan contact you yet? And okay. I told him, no, not yet. All right, did he, he told him my voicemail, he said? Yeah, so just give him a couple seconds and, uh, give it a call and see what he says. Um, how long ago did you see her, allegedly? Half hour ago, a Taco Bell in the city of Sheboygan. Okay. All right. In a white van with a black gentleman. Got it. All righty. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Bye-bye. Right. So she did call. She did call. Yeah. Yep. Good girl. Um, Dad. Hi, John. I'm sorry to bug you. Sorry, went too far. John. Hi, John. I'm sorry to bug you. Problem. Hey, um, I can't find the um, adapter when the battery goes in to plug in for the, the to recharge it. I don't know where the little piece is. Do you actually put the battery in something to charge no. it? You plug the whole camera in. Yeah. Okay. And it's on the camera unit. You plug that in somewhere. Uh, if you're looking like where the eyepiece is to look through. Okay. At the back of the camera, it's down at the bottom on the right. Okay, and you just plug that whole thing into the camera. Mm, yeah, there should be. Okay. A little, a little um, rectangular plug-in. Okay. All right. Goes at the bottom right. Okay, and I found your rain jacket, and I called Gary, and he's going to pick up everything in the morning and take it out, so. I don't know where the fuck the portable is, but I'll worry about that. <laughs> okay. All right. All right, I will let you get some sleep. I'll see you tomorrow. Right. Okay. See you yep, bye-bye. I'm not sure what the referring to. It's almost like she's got his camera and is going to get photos off of it or, or maybe charge it. I, I don't really know because it's not clear at all. I'm I'm just guessing that's John Dettering, but again, I don't know that. Just speculating. All right, here we go. Kelly, my county sheriff's department. You busy? Nope. Huh? No. 
Maybe. Oh gosh, no, I don't even have the radio on. Chris Wendorf might. Yeah. Pat, can you pause a second? I'll have an MDC or anything. Yep. Becca asked a question. She wanted a real quick answer. She's on the break. Um, I think that Walmart was like 6.30 p.m. And the Taco Bell was like about midnight. Right? Um, th yeah, the, the Taco Bell was th like 30 minutes prior to him calling. And it was, I don't know, 12, 12.40 a.m. 40 so. or something. Yeah. Yeah. So right but around I'm midnight. But I'm pretty sure the Walmart sighting was like around 6.30 p.m. That sounds right. Without going back and re-listening to it, that sounds right. And it, it sounded like from the dispatcher what she said, the guy that called was the one that saw her at Walmart and he was telling her about somebody else he knew that saw her at Taco Bell. Correct. That's yeah. right. He did he did mention her friend. That's correct. Yep. Yeah. So who Sorry, Kate. Who, was, who was the investigator that he reported that to? Weger. Weger. investigator. Yeah, I thought that she sounded like Weger. Yeah. God that, was so bored with that. Did you notice how bored he was with that? Almost like. Yep. Okay. Huh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. so. Okay. Yeah, that's a week after she was murdered, Becca. And he said allegedly, so he not only bored, but doubted it. <laughs> like what Danny Brewer fan says, the Sheboygan Police yeah. Department is like two minutes from where the Walmart Taco Bell. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah. Sheboygan Police Department's, you know, it's at least as big as uh, uh, Manitowoc. Oh yeah. I mean, it's not, it's not, a, it's not a small county. Mm -mm. No. Alrighty, uh, I don't know who this caller here is, but uh, I'm going to find out. But uh, yeah, almost almost sounds irrelevant, but we'll see if they bring up the case at all. Oh no! Fun oh, sucks. Yeah. So are you watching Grass Grow? Oh, got a bunch of gravel. What? Got a bunch of gravel around me. Oh. <laughs> This sounds like somebody that's out, out at the uh, scene. At, yep, security. Yeah. Surrounded sure by does. gravel. Yep. Fun, fun. Yeah. Are you serious? Yeah. I saw an aerial shot on the news. Are you out by the junkyard? I'm in the quarry. So okay. I'm on the back side of the junkyard. Huh. I've got uh, a conveyor belt next to me that doesn't work. <laughs> What, you actually try it? <laughs> no, I don't belt on it. It's by the conveyor belt, you said. Yep. Where they used to put gravel on it to bring it to the front. Hmm. So they were loading a truck or something. Okay. They'd put it on there and it would roll all the way to the front. But dots, dude. Oh, thanks. I appreciate it. See? There's another call. Something just clipped out of it. It immediately jumped into another conversation that they're continuing to have. <laughs> Oh, really? Oh, my God. Well, it's still raining here, but it's supposed to. For okay, here we are, the midnight of the midnight at the, on the 6th, and they're getting more rain. Like, the morning. Yeah, it's going to like stay like seven hours, but I think it's going to be a little longer than that. It's, they're like, well, maybe we'll probably be again. Well, maybe I'll be drinking during the game. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> my brother's in town. Oh. So where's Leslie? I thought for sure she'd come in. Nobody knows. Oh, really? Yeah. Huh. Oh, well. Now Nan comes back tomorrow. Oh, to ask if he could help? Yeah. That's nice. Yeah, I'm surprised Kimmy's out there. Who's that that's calling? Everybody that 
Sounds like Leslie. Les, I'm guessing Leslie Lemieux. I think they said that nobody knew where Leslie was. That's right. And they said nobody somebody knows. else called in and offered. They were surprised. But that part, got, that, well, that was where the file ended and went to the new one. It's clipped out. <laughs> yep. Yes. So it's so irritating. Well, how long do you think you guys are going to be out there? All night. What about tomorrow? All day, too? Oh, they got to drain the ponds, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, they have a bunch of small ponds and a big pond. If they clear the big pond, they want to drain all the small ponds. The big pond. And is the owner expected to come back on Monday? I don't know. Uh, I guess he's up the Nope. Yeah. There. I got a tip. This is the eighth file in this call. Oh. Seen at the tackle. What? Oh, I thought they'd cut it off after she said I got a tip. <laughs> in Sheboygan at 11.30. Yeah, and her stepdad, she was, uh, I was Walmart. Walmart. Yep, that's the same guy that called again. He said, why aren't you going to do anything? I called in and said that she was at Walmart, and now I just saw her at Taco Bell. I just said, well, I don't know. Let me transfer you to the investigator. He said she was yeah. driving a white van. The male black subject sitting next to her, and then someone in the back. File number 11. So the male black subject was following her in. Really? Well, the lady, hey. this lady, there's a lady that called. What's up? They say somebody was following her in to Walmart, I guess. I think, I back it up. I think that's what she said. The male black subject was following her in. Really? Yep. The, the lady said, this lady, there's a lady that called. Oh, well, this guy called, and he said he was at Walmart right now. What, right? Yeah. Oh, she she called and said, well, 6.30 this afternoon. This lady walked into Walmart, there was a black guy. Didn't know if this black guy was following her or not. Or was with her. That's exactly what this guy said, too. He said it just kind of looked like he was behind her, kind of hovering. Exactly what she said. Oh my gosh, wow. That was at 6.30. Well, and this guy was still waiting at 11. He's like, well, didn't Sheboygan call you? And I said, no. Because nobody had told me any of that. He called the, he could call the uh, local police department and have them respond to check out who she was. Yeah, well, that's what he did, and then nothing happened, and then called here. And nothing happened, and then called me again, and nothing happened. They didn't transfer back over to Sheboygan. Both of them back to their home. Hmm. Because they've got to be here then. Yeah. Obviously, if it was her, that's like to do with that one girl that was taken. Someone looked at her and called the local police, and the local police ID'd her. I wonder why they didn't go. Well, Good question. Does chick look like her, or this chick is her? Well, somebody ruled it out right away. No. I got it from a male subject who didn't speak very well English. Sound like yes, he, he said did. he was a worker at Walmart. He <laughs> yeah, sounded fine to me. Or he must have taken a break, and or somebody must have taken a break and went to Taco Bell and saw her. Mm. You know, she does kind of look common. You know, there's nothing that really is outstand. You know, that stands out on her. She's just a pretty young girl. Yeah, but the one lady said that was her eyes. 
Oh my gosh, really? Yeah, they're eyes. Hmm. Interesting. I wonder if there's any uh, African American employees at his junkyard. Yeah. Huh. Or if he has any white van, van, whatever, a white van that was. Of course, it has to do with Avery. Yeah. That was run. <laughs> of course. And by the way, this is file. This is file number eighteen for one call so far. Nineteen. Oh, well, this is nice and quiet here, so Jeremy can do his thing down in the basement. What is Jeremy doing? Processing some evidence Bill brought in. Processing uh, okay. evidence. What? It, She's talking about Jeremy Hawkins. It's almost yeah. 2 a.m. This this call is at 141, 20 minutes to 2. And Jeremy's there processing evidence. She said really? something right after that. I couldn't tell what she said. Back it up a little bit. What is Jeremy doing? He's processing some evidence Bill brought in. With Brennan? Who's, who's Brennan? I haven't heard of that name. Come on, Duke. Who's Brennan? Basement. What is Jeremy doing? Processing some evidence. Bill brought in. Brennan. Yeah. Yep. I got two on in the holstein. They can always pull one of them out. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Number twenty. Yeah, one eighteen is on. I don't even know who that is. Oh, who? No, it's, it's Brett. Oh, Brett. Yeah, Brett's the uh, prison guard. Works for time for him. Those are the whole thing. Works for the same prison group. Well, when I quit, they hired him. So, uh, he knows his shit. He's a lot better than blowing his shit. Right. You too. Stay awake. Oh, okay. We got my monitor. Drink one. Oh. The other one. <laughs> Drink the other one about 3.30. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll talk to you later. Oh, okay. Okay. Bye. 22 files. Tell you my county sheriff's department. Uh, hi there. Um, I'm part of the whole look for Teresa search thing that's going on. Mm-hmm. Um, no, I know Ryan. you may have gotten a couple calls recently. Sounds like him. Sounds Not like sure. Ryan. He's... Yep. Oh, this and might this be is... about the Walmart and Taco Bell. It's 1.50 a.m. Tell about Sheboygan and her being fed tonight. Yes. And I just talked to the lady whose husband is actually out there doing it. But I don't, I don't know what information she gave you guys, or did you guys get a hold of an investigator, or at least... Send somebody in an investigator's way. A reference to Sheboygan? Or to Sheboygan, right. Yes, our investigators were notified. They were notified. Somebody actually spoke with them physically? Um, that I'm not sure. Um, I just gave the information to the investigator who's working on it, and he took okay. it from there. Okay, so so he actually knows about this like, currently? Yes. Okay, I just, I just wanted to make sure. She said to me that somebody got a voicemail for one of the investigators, and I thought, oh, a voicemail's not going to work, but... I just, I guess, I just wanted to make sure that that the actual word got out. And I, I don't know what she said, but apparently it's the workers at the Taco Bell. I don't know if you knew that. Across okay. From, yeah, I knew that too. I heard something about Walmart, and then I heard something about Taco Bell. Right, that they had been in Walmart earlier, which you know they'd have cameras all over the place. Right. And the Taco Bell, I guess the people working at the drive-through were the ones that seen her there. I okay. Guess, I guess I just didn't know what she had told you that. People that called me were all, you know, shaking up and really kind of scrambling and forgetting stuff and remembering it. And I just kind of wanted to make sure that at least they got that stuff across to you guys. Yep, that's exactly that what, I, what I was told and that. I transferred it to. The Apparently he got a call or somebody got a call. Well, I understood from the beginning there. What the, what the hell? I, I, I don't know. I never really understood how that worked, but. Apparently somebody gave him a call. I'm or gave one on such... Well, yeah, but you know, put him on the payroll. 
And, and if you look at this call here, we're already at minute and 37 seconds. This is one call, so it's going to probably be close to two minutes. Those call, these calls can be recorded, or these files, for as long as they want. Anyway. All right, moving on. The investigator, so okay. he, he was there and he did take the call. Okay, was it Mark? Yeah. Is that you? Yep. Mark Weger? Mm-hmm. Okay, maybe I'll give him a ring and... You know, see if I have his card and his number and everything and see what's going on. I guess if, if I know he's awake now, I guess. Okay. Well, I'm not sure he is. This was uh, 11 o'clock. So it was 11 o'clock. Okay. Yeah, about 11 or 11.30. Hmm. So I don't it's know. After midnight. I know that uh, a lot of personnel are coming in early in the morning. Okay. So I don't know if you want, want to try back then. Right. I, it, it's, up I, to, it's up to you, whatever you... Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. Yep. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs> Kelly, my county sheriff's department. Hello. Hello. Can I help you? Hang up. Kelly, my county sheriff's department. County, it's Kelly. Hi. Yeah, last call was me, too. <laughs> <laughs> Don't hang up on me. <laughs> well, I couldn't. It was all scratchy. I couldn't hear you. Um, just a note that uh, when uh, Gary Schultz shows up tomorrow, uh, have him bring, uh, there should be, uh, there's two pairs of bolt cutters uh, as well in the garage and in, uh, I, I believe the other one's down in the evidence room, but uh, have him bring those bolt cutters along. Okay. And ah, that should do it, I think, for now. I think it's something else, but just... I want to remember to give you a call before I forgot. So. Okay. All right. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Bye-bye. Bye. I'm thinking that was Kelly, Kelly Sipple. Hi, Kelly. It's Chris. Hi. How are you? Good. Did they find her yet? Nope. You how creepy. I know. I was just looking at her picture. Yeah, she's kind of cute. Yeah. You think she's dead? Uh, I don't know. How about personally? Probably. What a nut. He just got out. Yeah. Here we are. Um, Guilty. Let's, wow. Let's see. It, it is 2... Uh. This call is at 2.37 a.m. Guilty. Lock him up. Done. Creepy. Creepy. Yeah. That's creepy. <laughs> That's creepy. <laughs> Think she's dead? Yeah. Yep. He's guilty. Lock him out. Hey, Done. Yeah. So this is a Sheboygan Walmart? No. Or, oh, no. yes. Oh. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And how far does Ryan live from there? Well, he lives in Calumet County, so. No. He lives in Manitowoc, so it depends on where he lives in the county, but, you know, it could be, so, I don't know. This 20, person that called in also let him know, or I mean, how did that get to Ryan? I don't understand if he's not in the same city. Well, he's lead, he's leading the search team, and everybody's got his number. I say okay. everybody, his number's out there for people to call because he's leading the search team effort of the volu uh, citizen volunteers. So they so, could have just gotten it off of one of the posters, huh? Something. No. Uh, you know, word of, no. Word, word of, no. Word of mouth. No, it wasn't on the posters. They would give yeah. it at dispatch if somebody yes. called in and wanted to join the search So was Manitou team, Manitowoc was giving it out, too. A, if they're calling in a tip, I can't see them handing that off to Ryan. That's what I said. I think somebody, somebody heard it from somebody and called him. That, that's what I'm assuming. I don't know that. The only way I can figure he heard it. I can't imagine anyone from law enforcement calling and saying, hey, we got a tip. At, well, he at that said that, that she was all nervous and, you know, uh, tripping all over herself trying to give yep. him the story. Yep. That's really weird. It is weird. And it, you know, it leads me to believe whether there, I mean, I'm sure of it. There are other calls that we just don't have. Like they got took out. I got pulled out. You can just tell listening to these calls and splitting one call up into 22 files again. Why would you need to do that? Yeah. This is, it comes across as 
uh, the part of the call I don't want you to hear. So we're just going to clip it and make a bunch of different files out of it. So, all right, moving wow. on. I feel bad. We do have sightings, though. I keep getting calls from people who think they see her in Sheboygan. Really? Yeah. So I'm not sure. Maybe it's, maybe she just, because she was there. Yeah. Did you want to hold like, another call come in? No, I'll let you go. Okay, come in. Bye. What do you mean she was there? She was at the Salvage Yard. I think that's what she meant. No, she's talking about Sheboygan. No, I think she meant she was at the Salvage Yard. That's what it sounded like. Oh, I'm, really? yeah. that too. I'm not sure. Maybe it's, maybe she just, because she was there. Yeah. Did you want to hold like, another call come in? No, I'll let you go. Okay, come in. Bye. County Met County Sheriff's Department. Oh, yeah, it's a little breezy up here. <laughs> I, I ain't getting out of the car if I don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Because you're going to fall down? <laughs> I can <just> fall down. <laughs> <laughs> After that last comment, that's the NBC. I think I'm going to leave it alone. What's <laughs> 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 going on right now, just in case they fall? <laughs> well, exactly. A lot of people are asking me questions, and I'm just like, I don't know. Thing. I don't know. When Gamey just called and asked me, you know, did they find her? No. <laughs> well, what do you think? I don't yeah, know. Yeah, we'd have a news announcement out if we found her. <laughs> no kidding. Yeah. Everybody's got... And, uh, Tammy's been asking me to, and I gave them a little heads up on it. Oh. Uh, what is it? Now. Yeah. Let them know, because they're like, holy cow, you got, like, everybody and the, and their brother on tonight. And they bring up our screen, and there's, like, four extra people on Well, you should have seen it earlier. Oh, I saw when I first walked in. Yeah. Yeah, that was holy cow. Jeff came home and he's like, what the heck is all this? I'm like, well, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not working. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I saw, I saw the news, uh, the updates on the news. That's where I do. Oh. Uh, hmm. The one and only, the one in rare time that I do watch TV and catch the news. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, it's going to be a long night. <laughs> I know. Oh, well, a long day, too. Yeah. And I'm not going to make the comment I did yesterday. <laughs> What's that? Oh, about uh, something about being productive. After I typed you that message, and I'm like, yeah, this is a really productive night. <laughs> and you give me the crash over on Lake. Oh, <laughs> That's right, and yeah, you don't ask, <laughs> don't comment. <laughs> no comments. Yep, no comments tonight. I think I typed, uh, I typed Marie. She goes, well, you asked for it. I said, well, I should have asked for food. <laughs> I'm like, <"Selling." laughs> Noticing the timer up here, how long this call is so far. Yeah, Over three minutes head. straight. <laughs> uh, it's okay. Oh, what I was going to show you before is the, uh, the picture on the crash report. I found the I found the tires. They were attached to the axle about halfway out into the field. <laughs> well, where is this guy? What did, what happened to him? At about nine ten, uh, the night before, he was on his way home, and the rear axle fell off. It just fell right out of the truck. Oh my gosh! The uh, the differential let loose, and uh, the tires just you know the axle spins right on the inside. It just it just let loose and started letting the tires come out. Oh and, uh, my gosh! Well, he bounced off the ground a couple of times. Could you imagine? Oh, I cu I couldn't imagine. I mean, that's don't you know? Like, well, where are the tires? <laughs> where is everything from the rear? <laughs> you know, after I get down there and I'm looking around, and like I said on the radio, I've, I've been out trying to locate the tires. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. And, uh, according to Rod and the old uh, the old man, he uh, had the dog with him and everything. He's just driving along and all of a sudden out it comes. And after the sun started popping up a little bit more and I looked around a little bit, I saw something out in the field and I thought it was just a box of some kind, you know, planted out in the field. Uh, it was it was half an axle with one tire, and the other one was way up the road, quite a bit farther. My gosh! In the ditch, so <laughs> that's crazy. 
he's like, he got home and he started calling a few buddies to see if they had a, a truck available or whatever. And he said he fell asleep on the couch. You know, being, being that old and, and uh, he said his neighbor tried to hold a 100 pound dog back while walking because he didn't have his uh, leash. Oh, no. They had to walk back home and warm him out. And he said, ah, okay, I understand. Mm. So I asked him, so why did you call last night when you got home? Oh, this is what happened. <laughs> <laughs> Tracking down the sun, looking for the sun, thinking that he's been drinking, <laughs> and that the uh, and him being the sun being revolved. Everybody said this. Well, you know that happened to my ex-husband once. He was dropping Tyler off, and all of a sudden we heard on the scanner there was an accident down the road, and the front the front axle just fell off, and we we could not believe it. No, I I couldn't believe it either. Looking at the at the thing, I'm like that had to be an interesting ride. <sighs> It had to come out pretty quick. I don't remember what year was that truck. 82. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was an older one. Yeah. That thing was like pieced together. Gee. Definitely wasn't uh, much of an original. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> yeah, obviously, the axle was probably the original. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, bar is. I have not had much of a bar trap in here. Really? I know that Sapphire's had a couple buses. Well, if they had them, they were gone by the time I came through. Mm -hmm. Well, I suppose, why go to Calumet when you can go to downtown Appleton? Yeah. yeah exactly. Well, so a lot of people come out this way for Sapphire. Oh, that's well. Uh, I can only imagine what it's going to be like on that Friday night or whatever for beer hunting. Thursday night. Well, what do you think? Apparently, apparently they're supposed to have, uh, like, the Chippendale dance or something. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. Oh, Are you off? You boy. Oh, oh, my God. God. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> I saw the Chippendales in New York City once. Oh, yeah? Yeah. That's pretty good. They're go. they're not as sexy as you think they are. You they don't stand a chance. Really. No way. <laughs> <laughs> And their, their bottoms are a lot bigger than what the girls wear. Ooh. Oh, I don't know. It's just, it's different. It's funny. It's, you know, it's just completely different. <laughs> it's like a bunch of guys in a swimming suit. Okay. Unlike the women, you know, they're like really skimpy. Yeah. She wanted you know, skimpier bottoms. They just treat yep. different. Uh-oh. Is that a fire call? No, it's TLP and I just tripped all yourself. Oh. Some reason, I was driving along with the wind, the rain beating on the car. I got to turn the radio off a little bit. This call is two minutes so and 20 are seconds. Are talking Move. on a different frequency out there? File number three. Look how well, long this one is. You can tell by different. you can tell by how slow the needle's moving over there. So they're just kind of yeah. babysitting the scene. Yeah, that's all they're they're supposed to do tonight. Um, oh, I got a call. I got another call. Okay. Call for service. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Kelly, my county sheriff's department. Hi, Connie, it's Chris again. Hi. Did, were you aware of earlier tonight when we had a transfer problem trying to transfer you guys a call? No. We transferred a call about that 10. We apparently had a bad 1050 earlier. Way earlier. Okay. Or A1050, anyways. Vehicle fire, maybe. Oh, really? I don't know, but it was resolved. We got you guys there. Okay. Um, we transferred it from our, our, our 911 system and it went to a home residence. Oh, my gosh, really? <laughs> yeah. Somehow our number for you guys got changed. Is this the number, like when we transfer 911 calls to you, is this the number it comes in on? Um, no, normally it comes in on another number. i got to push on hold again. Okay. Hold on. Kelly McCoy, Sheriff's Department. Good morning. Hi. How are you? Good. Hey, uh, do they got a computer up and running over on the command here right now? I have no idea. You can go direct with 829. He'll hear you. Well, I was just curious. I'm looking to see if they were signed on, but I don't, I don't remember what the code was. And I don't see anything on their roll. Uh, yeah, I don't see anybody signed on to an MDC at all. Well, yeah. Well, they should read. I'm sure it would reach for them. The MDCs? Yeah. Um. It goes a long way. Yeah, but the radios are doing well. Yeah. Well, well, I think it's a little bit at all. 
Well, I was just curious. I was going to send whoever is giving the command post, or would she just sit down and watch in the area? Uh, I think she's in the command post. No big deal. I was just going to send them a couple messages. Oh, okay. All right, I got to go. I got to game me on the other line. Okay. All righty. Bye-bye. Bye. Hello, Chris? Yes. Yeah. This is probably a question that Kelly has to answer. I, um, I think I answered it myself. Because when I was talking to her, I just started thinking about what she said. She said when they programmed our original one, they had the 8492235 programmed in. They did? Yeah. Okay. So well, don't you guys have, like, a tab that you... Yeah, that's the one we did. Yeah, okay. Somehow it got forwarded. It just says star 21 on it, and it went to some guy's house. So somehow there was a Yeah, but okay, well, I guess what I'm saying is that number probably shouldn't come to the 8492335. It should probably come to like 8494931. You know, when you, when you hit up, you go on your 911 screen and you go to transfer. I don't know if you have the same program. We have in Toronto. Oh, okay, well, you don't have the same program. Well, all okay. these, uh, ever since we've had in Toronto for the years, a couple of years that we've had it, They've had it programmed at eight four nine two three three five. Okay, that's fine then. Should I leave it? Yeah. I have one suggestion though. You could ask your dispatchers to identify themselves instead of just dropping the call. They don't do that. No. I get that a lot, and then I just ask the people. So can you tell me who transferred you? Yeah, Audigami. Oh, okay. I'll put it on our resume for you. I mean, it's just something. I'll put it on our resume for you. Don't do it for me. No, no, I'm not I won't. And it's not going to have your name on oh, it. Oh, I'm not really complaining. No, no, I just, no. I just I'll just put a general over when transferring calls to other agencies. Make sure you identify yourself before you hang up. This call here is approaching okay. four minutes. That's great. Kurt's on the head. No. Because <laughs> actually, out of game is the only one that does that. Well, anyways, um, the guy, it went to some guy. We did it twice. Well, what did he do then? He <laughs> Can I help you? Would you like me to dispatch? <laughs> the guy's like, what the hell? <laughs> so I don't know what call it was. It happened before I got here, but it turned out we got you guys there. So how oh. terrible. Could you imagine answering your phone at home? Oh, yeah. Poor guys. Talk, I'm skipping it. All right, like moving a on. Bye. Bye. Hi, Scott. Yes. Where exactly is your vehicle again? Uh, it's on Highway 55, Blue Hawk Hill. You know? I live on Highway F, so okay. you can take Highway F down to 55 in okay. the Lakeshore Motel. Where the hell did this call come from? Hello, Scott? What? There, no idea. If you go to the south, not very far, it's on the uh, west side of the road right there. So but it's on, it's on 311 a.m. Yeah. And it's on the side? Yeah. It's on the Swing by the truck, and then he's going to swing by your house. Okay. On the west side. So, okay, there ain't nobody there, and I'm in my house, so... Okay. You know, okay, I understand. I, no. no. But Dan is right on um, double B. That's fine if he wants to get it out. Where does he take the... He can take... Kelly, my county sheriff's department. Hi. Hi. Yeah, that wind, that can be dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I was a little taken by it myself. <laughs> I was going to send you a, I didn't know how to... What? I wasn't sure which which way to spell it when I was going to send you the message, so... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the woo. Yeah. I thought that was pretty funny. Yeah, the jail just got on there pregnancy and said, does that mean I can't talk either? <laughs> and I said, you're not a unit. Well, I have a unit. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I, I was going to send you a message, but I've been kind of busy. Uh, are they going to have you work over in the morning? No. This... <laughs> I was just going to tell, send them a message and tell them the channel's been restricted. How come they're, can they not hear maybe? They should be able to. <laughs> I wish I could hear what was, she's referring to. The channel's restricted. Can't I can't understand what's going on in the background. That's what I was telling you guys earlier about these sidebands that at least have access to.
If you don't have the right receiver, you're not going to hear what they're saying. So much for restricting the channel. So, which which was the command you didn't know? 839. No, I mean, the command unit is 839? Or 829. He, yeah, he's out there with the... Uh, so you got, he's got like an MDC in there or something? No, they don't even have that. They just have their, their radios and they're talking on our channel, but I don't think they understand. I don't think they hear us. But they're using our channel. Oh, well, they might not hear the squad. They could probably hear dispatch. Hmm. Uh, Alright, to Kelly to get a oh. MVC. They, yeah, he might have one out there, but it's just not signed on. I don't yeah, know. But then they can send messages and... Yeah, but there, there's like four squad cars or transport cars out there, and they don't have MDCs in those. Uh -huh. So the only way they can talk to each other is on their portables or so they, or the car radios. Are they working or just protecting the scene out there? Protecting the scene. Uh -huh. They got four four canines coming in tomorrow. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's got a miserable. Old. I know. I mean, it hasn't let up at all. So. Hmm. Okay. Okay. So, uh, you don't get to run out of command unit, huh? No. I thought it was interesting that a part-time dispatcher gets to, but not a full-time dispatcher. I would have traded. She could have sat in here. Well, they probably get the, uh, call in, right? First? Or full-timers get the call in first? No, part-timers do. Uh -huh. Yeah. But you know what? I, they probably know me better, and I'd rather be in here where it's nice and warm than be freezing and wet and icky. Well, I don't know what your command unit is like. So. Well, it's actually the Manitowoc command unit. Oh. So I'm sure well, they, it's pretty decent. I can hear a TV when they talk. Well, if it's Manitowoc, then they got a decent radio system. They can probably hear all over the state. Well, that's what I thought, too. Yeah. Or in the bill. Oh, yeah. I, I Yeah. Bill knows the guy over there that set it up. I've seen training on it. Uh, so. But Manitowoc's not out there. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I just got a message from Wiggy. Bert called in sick. You gotta be kidding me. For the Packer uh, game? Not gonna throw it though. So, they and them are splitting. And there's two other patrol officers, so they got plenty. Who's the hottest food network TV star? Who's the hottest food network TV star? Paul Palmero. Who? Well, Malto Mario. Malto Mario Malto. Mario Malto. <laughs> or Emerald. Do I like his shorts? Does he wear shorts? Sometimes. Yeah, sometimes. Well, yeah, that guy, Malto Mario, that they're talking about, he got arrested for um, some kind of sexual assault something i don't remember exactly but he got he got in real trouble I'm sorry. okay bye bye <laughs> oh, excuse me <laughs> Pete, it's Connie. Hey, Connie, it's Pete. Hey, um, can you guys hear us on Sheriff? Because oh. I restricted the channel oh. because they're clearing a building. Yeah, I bet you, you forgot. And 829 is just talking up a storm. Uh, we were trying to do it on two, but mine doesn't work on two. Okay. All right, because they normally don't do it unless they feel uncomfortable, so... 
They must feel very uncomfortable going through the building tonight. Oh, yeah, sorry. All right. I'll go on too and see if you can hear me and remind them. All right. I guess I can too, but I just didn't want to embarrass them on the radio. But, okay. You guys can't hear us, No. I'll call. Okay. Bye. Bye. Hi, my county sheriff's department. Hello. Hi. I don't know if the channel's still restricted. Yeah, it is. Uh, I'll be en route to the exit scene. Okay, do you want me to dispatch Scott's now or just wait? Uh, you can probably dispatch Scott's. Yes, I'm just trying to do a zero Okay. Okay. Talk about right. an accident. Thanks. Hi, this is Kelly McCauley, Sheriff's Department. Yeah. I've got a vehicle in the ditch at... Thanks. Yep. Bye. Kelly McCauley, Sheriff's Department. Hi, this is Carol Crystal calling. I'm the nurse on call for the county for hospice. Mm -hmm. And I've had a hospice death, and I need to notify Moving the on. for one pass. Okay. What's that like? Hi, this is Kelly McCoy Dispatch. I got a call from a Carol Pritzel. Um, I believe this is a hospice death, and I do have a note. Yes or not? Four. Kelly McCoy. Hello. Hey, Connie. It's Kelly. Hi, Kelly. Hey, you just want to log uh, in our catalog that the uh, high winds just kind of ripped the tarp off the trailer. <laughs> okay. <laughs> We're short some, uh, uh, we got some fair amount of damage to the uh, command post here for Manitowoc County. All right. It's just put it in our log, and I'll try to have to explain it some other day. Okay. 6.07 a.m. Bye. Kelly, my county sheriff's department. Yes. Good morning. This is Levi Schmitz at 1030 Diana Street, apartment 201. Uh-huh. Moving on. Uh, and what's that? Right. Kelly, my county 911. Yes. I have an emergency. A car ran me off the road. Okay. Are you injured? No, I'm not. Just shaking up so damn bad, I'm about ready to drop. Okay, where are you, sir? I'm 57. Oh, no. Um, Florida. Her oh, help. Okay. okay, is the tank right away? Hi, this is Kelly, my county sheriff's department. Yes. I'm looking for a telephone number for Ace Heavy Duty. It's a tow truck company. Yep, You're welcome. Mm, Bye-bye. Hi, this is Kelly, my county sheriff's department. I've got a fuel tanker truck that is in the ditch, okay. and they're going to need to be towed out. Moving up. Um, he said, "Bunny, from no pet, he's cute." Bye bye. Kelly, my county sheriff's department. Hi. Hi. Has someone called in this beeping that's been going all night behind uh, the hospital or the child care center? No. Oh. Okay. Moving on. Well, Ronnie. Suddenly. Hey, Connie, it's Joe. Hey, Joe. Good morning. How are you? Good. Good. Say that map I grabbed last night? Yes. I brought it in the house and forgot it. You did? Yeah. Okay. I'm on 43. Okay. Southbound. Yep. Does it show what uh, exit I got to take? Um, it doesn't really show whether they are exits or not, but it's a Highway 147. Okay. I don't know, can you get off there? Does that I, sound familiar? I think so. All right, 147. It's 147 is where the uh, Larrabee is. It's okay. A, um, oh, it says exit 164, Highway 147. So, yes, there is an exit there. Okay. And then um, State Patrol is there, and you should see them right away. I'm sorry, what was that? The State Patrol is out there. You should see right away the, the scene. I but agree. It, now I think I can hear you. They have it all blocked off, so you should be able to see them. Okay. As soon as you exit. Okay. Exit 164. Okay. All right. Okay, love you, dear. Bye. My county sheriff's department. Hi, it's Jerry. Is Gary Schultz there yet? Yes, he's standing right here. Okay, let me talk to him a minute. Okay.
keys, right? Well, I got the ones out of the... Hey, boss. Hi, you need keys, right? Well, I got the ones out of the jail. Okay. <laughs> um, I forgot all about it, and I'm just like, oh, shit, I forgot that we got the keys out. I was going to have uh, Brett go in my office and get that ring of keys. Yeah, that's not a problem. Um, you got them, okay. Um, I'm just trying to think that one from the the truck we use, is that is that a Chev or what is that? Um, Do you remember? No, I don't. Is Brett there yet? Um, I haven't seen Brett, but I got a... I got a Ford key here, so I'm sure we can get into either one of those trucks. So. Well, <clears throat> you just got one Ford key, right? Right. Well, uh, I'll give okay. it a shot. If not, I'll go get that master key and break into your office. Where are they? Okay, they're in the middle drawer. Okay. You know, right, right where I sit. Okay. Pull it out, and they're all on a uh, uh, a ring that says uh, command post, I believe it says on there. Okay. And they're all, every, every, everything is on one ring. Okay. All righty. Right, not a problem. It'll be a little yep. bit. I, I brought my gas can, so we'll have two gas cans full. Okay. So. Okay, yeah, just tell them you've got my permission to go in. <laughs> I'm just going to do what I do, right? I know you will. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll see you when I get up there, boss. Okay, thanks, Gary. All right, bye. Bye. Six fifty-eight a.m. Hi, I'm at Medical Center Nurses Station. This is Bonnie. Hi, Bonnie. Joyce Casper calling. Hi. Checking in to see how my dad is doing. He's in room 115. Okay. Jill calling. Just checking Hi. how my dad did. This is Miss Dean Can I help you? Hi, Joyce Casper calling. Just checking how my dad did. Thank you for what I'm over those. Uh, okay. Personal call. Personal call. While these dispatch calls are on here. Come come to Sheriff's Office. Good morning. I'm Dr. Marie, please. Sure, will, please. Thank you. Good morning, Tom. I'm coming to Sheriff's Office. Hi, uh, Joyce. It's Kelly. Yes. You got a cell phone number handy for Rick Reamer? Um, Reamer. I have an 841 okay. 7365. All right, thank you. Otherwise, I have another one also, and I think that's that SWAT one, or VSE. Yeah, I went to that one. Okay, and that one is 576-8951. Okay, thank you. Oh, sure. Good morning, Tom McCombie Sheriff. Uh, hey, this is Deedring. Uh, hey, this is Casper. Hey, what's up? Uh, I need a phone number for an Appleton business. <laughs> Nine nine three nine nine three three. What? Never mind. I got it. Okay. Bye. Bye. Kelly my County nine one one. Hello. Can I help you? I'm your Joyce Casper calling back. Um, I was told to call back that the doctor would have seen my dad by this time. One moment. One moment while I transfer you. Hey. Hi, this is Joyce. Um, I'm a daughter of Jim's. Uh, yeah, that comes a lot, too, with the Parkinson's. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I'm not sure if they're... they're I, I know he had all his medications at the home. Mm -hmm. that, if they're, uh, okay. Not more than yesterday, I think, really bad. Yeah. Uh, so they... We, yeah. you know, Personal call. Okay. Yeah, I know it's the same. Morning. Yeah, we'll eat little ease. Work here today. We'll be... Good morning, Tom McCoy Sheriff. Did you get your golfing all done? Yeah, I got two trophies. Two trophies? Two of them, yes, 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 yes. Oh. I done good. You did good, huh? Yeah. yeah. And oh. one's kind of, was kind of nice because it's like a Pilsner glass. Ah. Uh, 753 a.m. And my name etched in it. Now the personal and, call um, sounds like. Hold on a minute. <laughs> um, my name is in on it and all this kind of good oh. stuff. It was special. <laughs> but then, well, before I got my trophies, then I got a phone call. This type thing. So he's in. So if he's strong enough, he can beat it. If not... Right. Um, yeah, the heart's strong. Mm -hmm. The lungs are bad. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, the doctor last night, too, said, did they ever, the last time he was in, did they go in and with a needle and get some of that fluid out of his lungs right away? And I go, no, they never did that. And he said, well, okay. 
So they're trying to fight it with antibiotics and all that kind of good stuff. So went to yeah. that. Mm -hmm. all the time and harder to do. Mark was trying to call that tree's Hallbuck. That's who Danny and him wanted to have for their wedding photography. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, He's trying to call her on Tuesday. No, Monday. Oh, really? He tried to call her again. You know, he had talked to her once before and was just going to get some more confirmation stuff. Do you know what, her, did she, her cell phone or Mark's? Huh? Did they use Danny's cell phone or Mark's? I think they used Mark's. Oh. Um, because I know they're checking all her cell phone records. Well, that's what I told Mark. He said, well, I'm they sure might get a call. Yeah, yeah, they might get a call on it and stuff. Right. And okay. They didn't find nothing else? Just the car yet? Correct. Okay. Yeah. Boy, that's just tough. It is. Awful. Just awful. Yeah. Yeah. It just, it's such a weird situation with the person that they're at, and it's just... Yep. You don't know. Exactly. Yeah, well, uh, do you have any deer by the wayside? Uh, and we get everything else hashed out. No here. deer by the wayside. <laughs> <laughs> I took my looker out with me yesterday to get that one up on 149. and <laughs> down it could be. Mobile sign. Then they decided they didn't want it. Mm. Yeah. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> it was down further, and I see. Uh, you tell me it was down that far. She's out of that water. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, when I heard yesterday, he said, well, up to half inch. Well, where did the Lord have? And we went to talk for a I said, well, I'll come. Guardian says, for a new home, doorknobs laying underneath the kitchen I've been there and everything's just sneaking. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah that's the way they do that now. <laughs> you think of um, heating those darn things. Yeah. You know, yeah. Just, well, he's got one of those, uh, you know how that is. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> and stuff. So, yeah. Now I'm such a dad, let me know. Okay, well, I will do that. All right. Okay, Talk thank you. Later. you. Take care. Bye. Bye. Good morning, Tom McCunny Sheriff. Yeah, good morning. This is Levi Smith. I want an officer over here as soon as possible. Sure. Same guy. He called call like five or six times. Yeah. Yeah. Tom McCunny Sheriff. Yeah. Did you talk to the hospital? I talked to the doctor, yes. How old is he? Person called. When it gets there, I understand the DNR process. Right. We'll just leave it there. Who's okay? Okay. Yeah. Someone County Sheriff. Hi, it's Jerry. Hi. Um, I was wondering if you could call um Social Secure Half and what was using for the search of the dogs. I'm sorry. Okay. Um what I need you to do is contact um Somebody. <laughs> I'll let you make that determination. Okay. To follow a vehicle down to the crime lab in Madison. Okay. Uh, and that can be the jailer, that can be the dispatcher, that can be anybody who I have deputized that can just follow the vehicle so that we can log that it's uh, down in Madison. Okay. So you want me to go? Want to? I don't care. Quiet day? Quiet day so far, yeah. Okay. Um, do you want to if Marie's in favor of it? Marie's shaking her head. Yeah, that is okay. Okay. Um, why don't you, let's uh, see, what do we got for vehicles over there? Joyce says she'll go, and I'm, I'm fine with that. But, Looks like one marked here. What's that? Looks like hang, one. Hang on, a, hang on a minute. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, make sure you get directions for going to the crime lab. Okay. Uh, so that you can know how to get down there. But uh, there's one out there, or what do you got out there for people? I have, I have one mark out here. One mark? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, da -da 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 -da. All, so they're coming back with the transport vehicles, aren't they? Yes, they're coming back with transport. Okay. Bring one of the transport vehicles over. Over to you? And, and then? Over to our location here. Okay. And then and go then, to Madison. And then follow this down to Madison, yes. Okay. All right. All but right. I, in the meantime, I should get directions to the crime lab in Madison. Yeah, right. Okay. Get directions on, on, okay. The, uh, on the Internet of how to get down there. Okay. All righty. I will I'll wait for a transport squad, and I'll be over. Okay, real good. Thanks, Joyce. Sure. Bye. Bye. -bye. Then she loses them. Okay. I'm sorry? Okay, said why she need directions if she's following. I was just going to say in case she loses them, I guess. Yeah, I, I guess, yeah. Get, get 
get away from each other. You know, red light or, you know, whatever. What did well, we decide walked... she was following? Was it the... We thought for a while they were talking about the rap, but... Um... Uh, this I, th I think this was the uh, burn barrels. Yeah, I think you're no, right. not 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 burn no. barrels, because those went to Calumet. Yeah, well, uh, but the whole point of her following is that she's can testify that chain of custody. It went yeah. straight there. So if she loses them, how does that help? Well, she could catch up and you know be in the same. Yep. Well, I mean, said a stop line. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's just yeah. sounded stupid to me. I don't know. Well, I, it's um, I mean, you got a point there, uh, but I guess at least it's a an effort to maintain chain of custody. I guess that's the best you could put it, right? But I don't remember what this. Maybe Duke Anthony, can remember what they were hauling. Anthony is saying a vehicle. That's what yeah. they said. Did they? The Grand yeah. Dam, maybe? No, Grand Dam came from Krivitz. That was right. Kucharski. Or not, that was us. Um, oh, what the hell's his name? Um, not. Maybe it was the golf cart. Could have been the golf cart. That's that's absolutely possible. That was Skolinski that took the Grand Dam and Krivitz, and yeah. the um, and the and the flatbed. Well, they actually had Chuck drive the flatbed himself right. so yeah it very well could have been the golf cart i'd have to look maybe duke can remember or doc or somebody that's um uh, on here i i actually thought it was following a vehicle which was inside a trailer no the only one they did that well unless they put the golf cart inside a trailer they, they may have done that yeah. I, I i i don't know i don't um, think she's following the the rav4 no, that was the day before. It was on the fifth, the evening of the fifth. That was Earl, um, that um, the the photographer and uh, Nick Mersberger, yeah. the uh, the tow driver, that hauled the rav the night before. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. If you notice these personal calls, there's really not much interruption. Uh, you know, calling the hospital, talk to my doctor. That call was over six minutes long. I actually think I set the t the the digital readout on here. You can set it to where it will show you how long the call is instead of mm -hmm. watching reset to twelve twelve o'clock every time. I think that's the reason I did that because I I know I be really began to notice. Um, the differences of how they handle some of these calls is it, it's intentional. You can tell it's intentional. There's no other, yeah. there's no other reason. Yeah. So, all right. Uh, all right. Let's, let's move on. Hi. Um, can... Department of Justice answering service. Hi. Um, Kelly McCone Sheriff's Office calling. I'm going to need directions to the crime lab. She's getting in directions. The 626 University Avenue. Oh, so it's right downtown. Moving okay. on. Yeah. Are you coming from the east side? Or? No, so you think yeah. so. I'm not. But, um, yeah, university is going to be before you get to the middle. Crime lab is. Okay. In other words. All right. Okay. Grand Truth PD. I'm Tony Sheriff. Hey, can you look me up a phone number for Grand Truth PD? Grand Truth would be 832-1575. Thank you. Okay. Bye. I'm Tony Sheriff's office. Hi. Hi. Could you give me those uh, two complaint numbers uh, on Schmidt and the one on um, Alk? Um. Yeah, I can. I can do that. And you can clear me on Schmidt's I twenty one him. Okay. Uh if he calls again I'm gonna I'm gonna end up going over and giving him a ticket. Okay. I thought he's mentally retarded, but I hear he's really not. So okay. we don't treat oh, him that's that, really the same that's as that guy that a normal person. All right. I would put a bunch up with this from a normal yeah. person. Yeah. Okay. Oh, 
fine. Oh, that's the guy with the Parkinson's? Um, he's missing the number. Uh, he doesn't have any teeth. At the office. Yes, this is Jack Hudson at uh, 1030 Diane Street. Yes. Uh, could you send a police officer over here, please? What's the problem? I have a problem with Leroy Schmidt. Okay, oh you're Jack. God. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Uh, you know, Come on, County Sheriff. Hi, uh, my name is John Hegner, and I'm having a little, I guess, uh, my mom, uh, Diane Van Rijs, was supposed to come on to her last residence to pick up her stuff, but her, uh, she was soon to be at cause and Tom Van Rijs said that he had to look at the order, so she needs... What address is that needed at? Uh... Van Irrelevant call. Okay, I'll send an officer over right away. Wouldn't get Nine oh three AM. Whatever this call is. Hi, Jerry. Hey Jerry's choice. Hi, Joyce. Um, my dad's in the hospital since last night, so uh, I'm not going, but Maria's headed over right now. She left about five minutes ago. Your way. That'll be fine. Okay. So your dad's not doing good now, or? He's having another episode of the COPD, the congestive oh. heart and type thing, and pneumonia. Okay. So okay. I thought I'd better stay closer. That sounds good. Yeah. Okay, real good. Got it covered, though. Anything else okay. you need right now? Mm, no, nothing right now. Okay. Okay, thank you. Sure. Bye. Bye. Tom McCone Sheriff. Hey, Joyce. We're at. Hi. What the hell is going on down there? Um, they found Chris Hobart's vehicle. Yeah, I just heard that on TMJ. Right. Okay. Now, this, apparently this Avery fellow is supposed to be involved, or? That's where they found the vehicle. Okay, where is that? Manitowoc, or? Our... Yeah, like kind of near Maribel or Larrabee. Okay. It's in Manitowoc County. All right. He's got a junkyard out there? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So why are they calling me? Well, they anybody and everybody has been kind of called on to go stand by and secure the scene and yeah. evidence or whatever. Do you want to call Jerry to see what he if he wants you to come or what he wants? Well, it's simple to call me at 720, but I can't get a hold of anybody on their cell phone. Um, did you try, Jerry? Uh, yeah. Can you hold on just a second, Joyce? Okay. Let's get a, uh, something to write on. I'm in Mercer right now. It's going to be at least, yeah, I don't know. It's going to be at least five hours for me. Okay. That, well, I, when you get closer, why don't you call in, and then I'll see where Jerry needs you at that time, or call Jerry. I'll give you his number. Yeah, give me his number. Um, 481. Four eight one. Four zero eight one. Eight one. What's Sipple's number? You got that handy? Yeah, and Kelly would be four one eight. Yep. Four zero eight five. Four zero eight five. You got Baldwin's number too? And Wendy's would be four one eight zero five nine nine. Okay, I'll try calling them. Okay. Bye, bye. Bye. I'm the county sheriff. Good morning. Hey, Joyce. Mike here. Yeah. Is uh, something going on? Did our command center go out for just a joyride or? No. Okay. Um, they found the Hallbuck's vehicle. In our county? No. Okay. In Manitowoc County. Okay. So they're all, they're working together on it. Okay. Good. Yeah. Where did they find it? At Avery's. Avery's? Mm-hmm. Where's that? Steve Avery's junkyard. Oh, for Pete's sake. Yeah. Yeah, so that's it. Okay. So, All right. Thanks. So far. Okay. All right. Bye. Bye. County Sheriff. Sorry. Yeah. Did you call this this morning? No. Nope. You don't think you're going to? No. Nope. They can call. They know where he's at. Oh, they do? Yeah, I told him that yesterday when I called that he was at the hospital. And you told him he was at Nope. They didn't come and didn't ask and didn't call. Family, so moving on. I didn't follow. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. But again, at that yeah. home here. Oh. So. Tell the county sheriff's office. Hey, can you give me the complaint number on this thing? 
Yeah, it would be 9213. Um, that's the LCA number? That's the LCA number. Can you give me the other number? i got to have that number. Oh, I don't know. Oh, let me check. I'm going to see if anything was attached. 940 AM. Missing person. That number is 05-0157-955. 57 what? 57955. Zero five zero one five seven nine five five, and that's not the LCA number. No, this is the, the, the Paragon number. Oh, oh right. Zero five. Yep. Dash. Yep. Zero one five seven dash nine five five. Okay, thank you. All right. Bye bye. Nine forty three AM. Hello. Hi, John. Yeah. This is Sheriff's Office calling. Are you all at with your mom yet? Yeah. Is the officer there too? Yes. Okay. Just um can I talk to him a minute or will that not work? No, hang on a second. Okay. I don't know what this is. Oh. Hi. I was calling to you on the radio for ten seventy five. And you didn't uh, answer. So I, I don't know. Huh? Everything's okay? Yeah. Okay. All right. That's all I needed. Yeah, I don't know why I wasn't getting it. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you. Yeah, bye. Bye. Good morning, Kelly. My Tony Sheriff's Office. Hi. This is Naomi Hoyt. I'm the manager on duty at Willowdale today. Okay. Uh, one of our visitors reported smelling gas outside one of our entrances. Okay, which entrance? The east entrance. Moving on. Okay. Hey. Hello. Hi, this is Kelly McCombie Sheriff's Office. Hey, does Tyson have a cell phone? Um, let's see, I would say so. You know what? Yeah, 418-4474. Is he tied up on anything? I believe he's heading over to the scene at 9 o'clock. Oh. Um, okay. Well, it, it seems like Yamaha yeah, County's running that investigation, huh? Joint effort with nine o'clock. Okay. A lot of guys working on that, huh? Right. Okay. Yeah, they got. he's got like 40 acres over there. Oh. Of junk. It's yeah. Avery's. Right. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Sure. Bye. Party down. Could you take a walk up here? I don't know if you know that, but I'm on my own. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yep, yeah, Yeah, you can't get them personal call in if you're by yourself. Kelly McCauley, 911. Hi, um, we just went outside and our cars got smashed last night. Okay, your address? Um, what's your address, you guys? Moving on. Just follow that. Call your match here. 1021 AM. Tracy speaking. How may I help you? Room 115, please. Sure. One. Good morning, Kelly. I'm at Medical Center. Tracy speaking. How may I help you? Room 115, please. Sure. One moment, please. I think this is your dad again. Good call. And they're coming up. Yeah. He said, he said like, soon. So I'm not sure what that means. That's that. you. Kelly, Matt County Sheriff's Office. Captain Royce. He's not in right now. You got a phone number to reach Matt. And he's not on duty. He's at home, I, I think. I don't know. Can I have his phone number, please? No, I don't give that out at all. Yeah, can you listen in the phone book? You can try. I'm not even sure. Can you have him call me? I. What do you need? My name is Gordon Schneider. Yeah, what do you need? Uh, what I need, I'd like to speak to Captain Royce about, please. Have him give me a call, please. Well, you can check the phone book for his number. He can call me and I'll, I'll explain it to him. I uh, educate him on something. Thank you. Wow. That's interesting. I mean, yeah. It just seems, it just seems really unprofessional to me. Who was that? Uh, Who knows? I, I, 
I, I don't know who he is, but he sounded like he needed to talk to Captain Rush. And she's completely blowing him off. I'm I mean, he wouldn't tell her what he wouldn't tell. Yeah, he wouldn't tell her. He wouldn't tell her what he wanted, but it doesn't matter. Maybe he didn't want this information passed to a dispatcher, you know. She couldn't give him his voicemail? I mean. At minimum, pass it on to yeah. the voicemail. Just, that was crazy. Just, yeah, I remember this before I'm thinking, well, what the? She may have freak? known who it was. Possible. Tony Sheriff's Department. Hi, Joyce. It's Jerry. Yeah. Um, can you get a hold of Winnebago County again? Uh, see who they he utilized for cadaver dog searches. Okay. Um, Mike Brooks uh, said he was going to send them along, but now the group has left already. Um, see if you can find out from Winnebago County which uh, which cadaver dog search teams they use. Okay. And uh, we have uh, Great Lakes Search and Rescue here right now. Okay. Um, I think we want to contact that other search team and have them come over because these dogs are going to start getting tired. Okay. We've got um, Headwater Search and Rescue out of Vilas County. I've got listed here. And then a canine emergency response, and they do cadaver. And that is in Larson, Wisconsin. Oh, yes. That would be the one. Okay. I have those those listed. Okay. Give me your cell phone number. Yes. Okay. Or see if... uh, Or do you want the number? No, you go ahead. I've got other things to do here. Okay. Uh, See if you can get a hold of them. All right. And see if they can get a group together to come over here. Okay. Um, See if they can be here this afternoon at 1 o'clock. 1 p.m. Okay. Yes. And then... uh, uh, give them my cell phone number in case they have to get a hold of me. Okay, sounds good. All right, thank oh, you. Sure. Bye. <clears throat> Talk to your daddy, please. Who is this? This is Kelly McCony Sheriff's Office. Daddy! Who's in the shower? Maybe you can call you back? Um, is your mommy there? Yeah. Could I talk to her, please? Mom! Hello. Hi, are you affiliated with the Canine Rescue Response Team? I am. Okay. <laughs> I wasn't sure with your your little answering service. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> this is Kelly McCony Sheriff's uh, Office calling. Yep. We're looking for a crew for cadaver search. Okay. They would like, if possible, to have one by 1 o'clock or 1 p.m. Um, over near Larrabee. Larrabee. Yeah, that's I'm not exactly sure where. That's Let me in, grab a pen quick. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Can you hold one second? Sure. I got another call coming in. Yep. I'm a county sheriff. Yeah. Hi. Um, I called the DNR because I had some hunting equipment stolen from me, and they told me that uh, I had to call you folks. Okay. Moving Maybe on. I'll call you back. I'm in the middle of another emergency. Okay. Uh, in the Kona area, the ninth one three. Yep. And your name? Dave Clifter. Okay. Um, it's Larrabee. You know where Michigan, Wisconsin is? Yeah. Manitowoc County. Yep. Larrabee is close to that. Okay. Um, I'll also give you the sheriff's phone number. Okay. And that is uh, cell phone four one eight. Four one eight. Four zero. Four zero. Eight one. And then my phone number mm-hmm. is um, Larson, your nine two, their area code, right? We're actually in Appleton. Okay. So. Okay, then you can call me at 800-442-9878. Who am I speaking to? Kelly McCauley Sheriff's Department. Okay. And I'm Joyce. Now, what it is is um, Great Lakes Search and Rescue is over there doing it now, but they feel if they don't find the body... 
their dogs are going to be too tired to continue. Mm -hmm. So what we're wondering is if you can get a crew together to be there like 1 o'clock this afternoon. Sure. Okay. Well, you want to call me back when you do and when you have an ETA, or how do you normally handle that? Well, if um, what I can do is if I get directions, I'll just call a crew and we'll just be on the road and make sure we're where we need to be at once. Okay. Okay. That's fine. Um, from Appleton. Okay. If you come all the way across on Highway 10, uh -huh. And then you'll intersect with I-43. I uh-huh. You'll go north. Yep. To the 164 exit, which yep. is also Highway 147. Yep. And then I'd, oh, maybe two miles, three miles, you'll come into Larrabee, and there'll be a state patrol officer there. And at that point, you can um, call the sheriff on his cell phone, and he'll direct you in from there. <clears throat> How long has Great Lakes been working? I think they just must have gotten there okay. sometime this morning. Okay. Uh, Is this for that girl? Correct. Uh, so. Yeah. All right. So okay. We're going to go 10 east to I-43 north to exit 164, which is the Highway 147 exit. Right. Roughly two to three miles into Larrabee where we'll meet the state patrol on the side of the road and then we're to call the sheriff on his phone. Right. Or when you get close in that area to see where he wants you. But and you're going to be stopped anyway when you get to Larrabee. Okay. And from there you can so tell you where to go, I guess. All right. Okay. Thank and what was your name? Uh, I'm Michelle. I'm Michelle? the coordinator for oh. Canine Response Team. Okay. All right. Thanks a lot, Michelle. Sure. All right. Bye. Chama County Sheriff. Yes, good morning. So I was wondering, could you help me? I'm trying to find, get the, find a number for the DNR warden here in Canine County. Sure. That would be 439. Chama County Sheriff's Office. Yes, this is Tom Merzberger. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm a neighbor to the Hulbooks over here in uh, Karen Hulbooks. Father, before he got there by a lot of Okay. He's uh, one of my best friends. Uh, I'd like to speak to the sheriff. Uh, okay. Um, what, he's not here at the office right now. What I think I'm going to do, Tom, is um, I'll give him that message Okay. when he calls in. And what's your phone number? My number would be 920-989. Two one one four. Okay, I will give him the message when he calls in, Tom. Okay, I really appreciate it. All right, thank okay. you. Thank sure. Chama yep. County Sheriff's Office. Chama County Sheriff's Office. Hi, this is your Wendy Walters. Today. She is working. She's not in the office right now. Okay. So when she'll be back in, right mm -hmm. now? No, I don't. No. Okay. Um, I'll try later. I tried to say yesterday. Correct. Do you, unless you want to go to her voicemail? I left one there yesterday. Okay. If I do it again, it's going to be bugging her, or should I just wait? I don't know. Is it something really important you need no, or something I can help you with? No, she's working on something that's going to come out in Colorado. Maybe she's going to want to come out in Colorado. Okay. Um, I don't know. You know what? I'll just give her a couple more days. Okay. All right. Sorry. Thank Bye -bye. you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Ten forty two AM Kama Coney nine one one. Kama County Sheriff's Office. Yeah, hi. Um, I um, the sheriff is fielding the calls. I can give you his cell phone. Okay. <clears throat> that's 418 okay. 4081. And that's uh, Sheriff Pagel, right? That's correct. Okay. Wow. And I guess there's a new 
conference at 130? I don't, I, that could be, I'm not sure. I heard it on the news this morning that there is one this afternoon, and that's all I have. But give Jerry a call. He'd be able to fill you in. Okay. Thank you. Well, she gave Hoggle's number to a reporter. Is that weird? Yes, it's weird. Like he doesn't have enough to deal with. <laughs> right, and that call was cut when he was going to say what he wanted to talk about because it went to another file. I just found that really strange that she did that because she they never do that. Inter- interesting. All right, moving on. Yeah, we're at 10. Uh, 10.48 a.m. Kevin County Sheriff's Office. Hi, Joyce, it's Jerry. Yeah. Can you, can you give us our case number on this and not the LCA? Not the LC, the 05 number. Okay. Zero five. Zero five. Dash zero one five seven. Zero one five seven. Dash nine five five. Nine five five. Correct. I'm going to read it back to you. Zero five dash zero one five seven dash nine five five. Correct. Okay. Tom Mersberger called two. He's willing to uh, offer a reward. Oh. Who's Tom Mersberger? Um, they're friends of the Hallbuck family. They were neighbors growing up. I don't know. Is okay. that one of Paula's brothers, maybe? Oh, okay. I don't know. Okay, how, how much? I didn't ask. I said okay. when you called in, I would relay the information. I took his number. You did. Okay, I'll uh, I'll take care of that when I get back. Okay. All right. Thank I'll, you. I'll put. Okay. Should I put his name and number in your voicemail then? Uh, or do you want a piece of paper? No, that'll be good. Okay, we'll do. Okay, thank you. Sure. Bye. I have reached the voicemail of Sheriff Jerry Poggle. Possible. If this call needs a great day. Offered the reward is four. Sheriff's Office calling back. Yes. Oh. Hi, is this David? Yes. Sheriff's Office calling back. Yes. Okay, what address was that stuff stolen from? Um, well, it was on DNR land. Okay. And, Maybe not. Okay, so near Ashton. Well, yesterday is some. Okay. Okay, and. Uh, yeah, right. Mm-hmm. Salmon County Sheriff's Office. Yeah, Ray from WHBY. Hi, Ray. How are you? I'm busy, busy, busy. Busy. <laughs> Yeah, what can we do for you? Where is that news conference going to be held? In Michigan again or in, in Chilton? I would think it's out there someplace. Out there, huh? Um, but you can call Jerry if you'd like to find out for sure. Is he worth he? He's 418. Well, let me make pen out. 418. 4081. Okay, this is cell phone, right? Correct. Okay. Is he in the building now? or? No, no, he's out at... The scene. He's out of the scene. Yeah. He's been out there all night. I I don't know. I came on at seven, left yesterday at three. I don't know if he went home in between or not. Did they find anything? I don't know. Uh-huh. I can't give anything out. <laughs> Let me sit on the fence. Yeah, I know. Which yeah, call, Jerry's fielding the the media call, so you okay. can give him a call. Okay, I'll give him a call. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Bye bye. Service, Chris. Chris, it's Joyce. Yes. What do you have to offer today? Today, well, so we got sloppy joes with uh, beans and cake. Did you put garlic in the sloppy joes? No, I didn't. Oh, then I can do that. Sloppy okay. right. joes. Right, you. County jail. Ten one hundred. Please. Okay. Yep. <laughs> Oh, get out. Are you kidding me? No. Oh, hi. It's out of We've got some major phone problems here. I just called Ben Hook's wrecker and it rings from your guys' office. That's major. Yeah. <laughs> okay, thanks. 
Good luck. Bye. Moving on. Here. Can you hold me my county sheriff's office? Hello. 336 here. Can you hold on a minute? Go on. One second. Go ahead. Uh, One second, okay? Hold on. Sure. Okay. Uh, I'm over here at the, in Larrabee. Okay. I'm working the perimeter, and they want me here again tomorrow also. I'm wondering, is Captain uh, Roosh going to be taking the court tomorrow morning? I would think so. Do you think he could grab mine, too? It's I've got a real small calendar. It's just like one. Okay. It probably isn't 10 or 12 names on it. Okay. And I will um, leave him a message to do that for you. Okay. If he needs to locate it, it it's in Jeff Braley's office. Okay. Top door of the filing cabinet. Somebody in there can, I'm sure, can show him where it's at if he doesn't know. Okay. Thank you, dear. I'll leave him a message. See ya. All right. Then. Bye. Calma County Sheriff's Office. Hold on. Um, can you do me a favor, Joyce? Uh, I'll try. Um, we need to do a check on even Avery's vehicle. Do you want he has all got listed to him to do a DHAS check? Okay. And let me know. Okay, will do. Thank you. Sure. Bye. I have another call. Hello. Hey, Paul, can you hold on a minute? I have another call. Yep. Calvin County Sheriff. Good morning. Um, may I please speak with Joyce? This is Sean Messer with Canine Emergency Response. Okay, this is Joyce. All right, Joyce. I'm just calling to let you know we have teams leaving Appleton right now, and they should actually get over between about 1.15 and 1.30. Okay. Okay, that's good. That'll help. Okay. All right. When you get to the state patrol officer, they'll let you know from there and I'll call the sheriff at that point. But I'll let them know you're leaving now. Okay. Thanks, Sean. Thank Have a good day. You too. Bye. Bye-bye. Eleven thirty four AM. Two things. Wait, can you Hello? Hey. Um two things. Wait, can you take court tomorrow for um three three six? Cause he's gonna, uh, okay, because he's gonna be at the scene tomorrow. Okay. Okay. He has only like ten or twelve. They're in the top drawer in Frey Lake's office. Okay. Okay, and the other thing, Gordy Schneider calls here for you. He has to fill you in on how to do things. <laughs> and he asked for your phone number. I said, I don't give that out. He said, is it in the phone book? And I said, I don't know. You can check. Yeah, she oh, knew she him. Know, she knew him, so apparently he's a caller. <laughs> Gordy Schneider. Yep. Yeah, I think he's... Um, uh, uh, suspicious, shall I say, possibly, of law enforcement. Ah. He was, he was going to educate him. That's what I got from it. <laughs> well, you, you know, the Schneiders are part of the family group that um, Christina looked into, Sunshine Christina, and uh, oh. I, I think, yeah, I think Sherilyn Pontello may have as well, but I, I'm not positive. But I know Sunshine Christina did. Yeah, Sherilyn knows everybody. Yeah. And who they're related yeah. to and where they live. And yeah, yep. she's done a lot she, of research. She has. Mm -hmm. Okay. Moving on. And he says, you call him and you tell him to call me. But okay. you know what? I didn't get his phone number. Uh, he hung what, up. What's going on with him? I have, He wouldn't say. He's got to talk oh. to you about it. Oh, okay. I said, you're Maybe right. he's a buddy with Avery, huh? Could all be junkyard. No, yep. could be. How's that going today? Um, I got a fresh team of dogs coming in, cadaver dogs coming in from Appleton. Um, not so far found on her. Are, are they going to? Uh, they do search warrants out there already, or not? They are out that today. They are out there doing search warrants on his houses, but he's got four houses out there. They said. Oh yeah. Yeah. I know Jerry had said there was one up in Marinette County, and that's. He's up. That must be where he's at. 
Yeah, that's what uh, Jerry had said yesterday. So. Yeah, and I know someone said this morning that they were going to probably take a SWAT team up there to try to take them into custody, custody this afternoon, so I'm not sure if okay. that's still... Why would they need a SWAT team? Uh, so they must have say, I, I'm thinking. And, and, and arrest him for what? I heard like at 1.30. Right. Oh, okay. Okay. Gun charge. Well, I mean, take a swap team up there and arrest him for what? For gun charge? Not yet. <laughs> no? Nope. No. Not yet. That's all the nine. Um, it's weird how they attribute everything to Stephen. He's got yes. four houses out there and he's got a place up in Marinette. And his, you know, and his junk, his four, his forty-acre junkyard that right. he doesn't own. <laughs> and maybe that crazy guy knows Stephen, his buddies with Stephen. Yes, the, the Sh Jordy what? Sh uh, Schneider. What that have to do with anything? Well, we got to. Well, we he called really... in and wanted to speak to Pablo. Right, tell him to do his job. He wanted to educate him. But uh, you know, I but think. Joyce, you know, blew him off yeah she did <laughs> yeah he's clearly been she knows who he is oh yeah but for for those that weren't here yesterday with the reading with the crew uh, i've mentioned this this gun charge everybody should understand that avery had a legal gun license and they went through um deb strauss went through well basically her ass to get that undone the, you can read the dc hour of course it was an excuse to get him in custody. Yep. That's right. Yeah. Regardless of not whether he should have been issued a license, he was issued a license. Right. Gun license. So, right. Yeah. Pretty, pretty crazy. Well, I don't, you know, you could question the legality of what they did. <laughs> anyway. All right. Let's move on finish up last night um no they they were supposed to bring a trailer stuff here they haven't shown up here yet okay. we we sent marie over to escort the vehicle down to madison to the crime lab okay or she's coming here and then you mentioned the vehicle again what vehicle the i vehicle. can't think of other... <laughs> yeah I, I can't think of any other vehicles that got transported i think it's got to be the golf cart on the six. Yeah, I, I I don't know of anything else besides the golf cart because the Grand Am and the flatbed were taken from Krivitz by Skrowinski. Yeah. They didn't take his truck. Um, no, they did not. Yeah, I think it would have had to have been the, the golf, cart. golf cart. Yeah, I think so too. All right, moving on. I'm going down. Yeah. Okay. She's escorting him from the scene. Okay. And Jerry out in the field, or where is he at? Jerry's out there, yes. Okay. Jeremy. Well, he never went home last night, huh? I don't know if he got any time off or not. I. That's the second mention of him staying there all night, staying on duty all night, and that's really strange to me. For the sheriff to do that. Don't know. Okay. All right. Maybe I'll give him a call later. So. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah. Sure. Bye. Kemal County Sheriff. Hi, this is Margo with WB18 News in Milwaukee. Okay. I'm um, just wondering if there is a picture available of the missing woman, Teresa Halbeck. Is that how you pronounce it? Yeah. Um, I, I don't have, um, let me see if I got a black and white here. Yeah, I have 11, a black and white. I don't know how it's going to would fax down, though. 11.53 a.m. emailing it at all? Or? No, I don't have a scanner available to do that. Okay. So the the best way to get, a, I guess, a picture of her would be, do you think on Monday maybe you'd have that capability? Um, I'm thinking the sheriff has a scanner okay. in his office. He's not in his office. Okay. Um, just to hold on a minute. Okay. okay. No, I think Jerry's the only one that does. I'm not sure. Can you know how to do that to scan it and then email it to? No. <laughs> yeah, why don't you try back tomorrow if that's okay with you? Okay, that's fine. Thank okay. you very much. Sure. Bye bye. Brilliant. Yeah, I just. 
San Antonio Sheriff for Brilliant. Yeah, I just, I'm on, um, where am I here? This is Tony Sheriff, huh? Yes. Uh, I'm on West on 10, right in front of Rudy's and Brilliant. I just, I think I just lost my transmission. Can I leave it, I, what's this laws here? Um, can I leave it just where it is and pick it up tomorrow? I've got a, a friend that has a tow truck. What type of vehicle do you have? It's a Ford Escort LX96 Black. Skip it, Pass, Jack. License plate, I think. Yeah. Yes. Oh, I just said skip it. Oh, yeah, I'm going to. Like I said, I think he can. I'm just pointing out for five zero. Okay, okay. In the quick. Kelma County 911. Hi, Joyce. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> My dad told me to call you. Okay, that's fine. Were you thinking of coming up? We're in the parking lot right now. Okay, you can come in and I'll, um,. Which door do we come in? The one on the east side of the building, kind of towards the back of the building. Okay. All right. Tell you my county sheriff's office. Hey, who's scheduled for 3 to 11? Pardon? Who's scheduled for 3 to 11? Where? In, Why you? On, in dispatch? On the road. Um, that's what I'm asking. Where? Um, 3 to 11 is 24. Oh, okay. 34. Okay. 30 and 39. 30 and 39. Okay. And Craig and Dave are working day shift? Yes. Okay. Um, Ken, who do I put Ken with? Um, Leslie's going to be over here. Okay. Dan is going to be over here. Okay. There's Leslie now. Yep, she said she's just getting there. You know, you're supposed to work at three. Um, See which one of Dave and Craig wants to work over. To see if either one of them want to work over on the road? Well, one of them is going to work over. Which okay, one? all right. And then uh, Ken can do whatever he wants. If he wants to ride with Jennifer, if he wants to ride with the holdover, or he wants to sit in the jail or dispatch, or I don't care. Okay, all right. I'm ready to. <laughs> I trust him more than you. Um, and then uh, is Wendorf in at 11? Um, tonight? Yeah. Dorf is 38? Yeah. Yes. Okay, so I've got Mary and Joel and Wendorf at 11. Correct. And Wendorf went home early? He had an accident, maybe an hour late he was. Okay. Um, do we know when he's coming back? I think at 11. I didn't hear anything else. Okay. Did you know that Dorf's coming back at his regular shift time, right? At 7 p.m. At 7 p.m.? Oh, it sounds like he's coming at 7 p.m., Jeremy thought. Jeremy's there yet? Yeah, he's just waiting for the evidence. Okay. You got everything done that he had? Yep. Okay. Um, then let me, I'll find out from Bill and let him go. Okay. Because they're kind of sitting on it right here now. <clears throat> Bill just got here. Okay. So when Dorf's in at 7. Mm -hmm, that's what Jeremy thinks. Uh, okay, so what? Yeah, one of the day shifts that holds over will have to leave at seven because that'll be twelve. Okay. And then he can take over for them. Okay. And then he'll be working a midnight shift and tell Jennifer she's going to extend over, and she'll work twelve. Jennifer on the road. Okay. All right. I think I got it. Okay. All right. And Joel will be back at 11, and Mary will be back at 11. Okay. And I think I think I'll have you look the road, and I'll have Joel come here, and then you and Chris can okay. handle. Jennifer will work all three with the two of you, and then she can leave it. Why don't you go? So let me write that down before I forget what I'm doing. Not like all scheduling. I'm going to move on. Old seven. Four is going to be on the road. Shift will extend over. Okay? Were you talking to me? Or are you done. talking to somebody else? I'm talking to myself and hoping you were paying attention. I'm paying attention. Were? Yeah. Jennifer, she's going to extend over and... Okay. Can you work until 7 tonight? Good afternoon, Calumet County Sheriff. Yeah, it's Craig. I didn't get the message. What is it? Can you work until 7 tonight? On the road? On the road? Yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, I guess. So, thank you. Bye. Bye. Why? What? Why? Um, because... Um, let me see. Cut 3 to 11. Came over there in the north. Yeah, I don't want to work on the road. I go over there. Do you like to get which one? Staying here. Tell him he asked. He doesn't have... Hello. And then what happens is... Hello. You were calling from home. You were calling from home. Son, your name and address? You come up here. Here's the address, 206 4th Street. That's the phone number it's coming from. And then it tells me what fire department, what ambulance, what police squad to send. And then if they have first responders, that will be down in the bottom, what they sent. Then it shows up here on this map. Here, I'll show you how to do this. Calma County Sheriff. Hi, Joyce. Yes, it is. It's Mary Pago. Um, I'm running food over to Jerry, and he didn't have time. He said I should call you and ask you for the directions. Okay. Um, 43, you know, I got to take that's like the four. One minute, great. So it's not. Uh, uh, no. Okay, thank that, you, Joyce. That's very nice of you. Bye. Okay. Good afternoon, Calma County Sheriff. Hi, Joyce. Patty. You yeah. busy? It's, I'm okay right now. Okay. Uh, I just called Kim's house, and Courtney said she came in last night. Did something break with that uh, mythic girl, with Teresa? They found the vehicle yesterday. Oh, they found only the vehicle? Yeah. Um, yeah. So that Where? Huh? Where? You guess. Manitowoc? Mm-hmm. Avery? Uh-huh. Oh, shit. Yeah. Yeah, so they're all out working, trying to find and so far no luck. Okay, because Courtney said, no, she's still sleeping. She went into work last night with this case, and I'm like, oh, then yeah. I know. Yeah, I think they went, she was over at the command post overnight. Oh, okay. Yeah, so. Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah. So are you home and available in case we need you? Yeah. Okay. Uh, we've got that company coming tonight, okay. though. That's but okay. I'm available tonight, too, if it needs Anything be. after 7, let's say, I would be. Okay, all right. Yes. Definitely. Okay. I'll um, put that on my list. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Anytime after, you know. Yes. Definitely. Oh. Okay. All right. All right. Sounds good. Okay. Enjoy the game. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Bye. Goodbye. Calma County Sheriff's Office. Hey, Joy. This is Joanne. Yeah. I know you're busy. Um, maybe it's... Um, Jerry looks like he's having a press conference at 1. Do you know I that? heard 1 or 1.30. Is anybody covering it on the news? I would think they're all there because they've all been calling this morning um, about it. Okay. We'll turn around and see what's going on. Yeah, then let me know. We're, I'm sitting here with no TV or nothing, you know. Joy, it's you my scoop. <laughs> they didn't find her yet, did they? No. <laughs> no. How, how incredibly sad. Isn't it? I was telling Steve Friday night when they was on the news at 10 that the last place where she was seen, and he's gone. Oh, you gotta be kidding. no. He yeah. never gets upset over things, you know? Yep. And he's like, this is just incredible, you yeah. know? Exactly. Oh, yeah. What a horrible thing as a parent. Uh, I know. I can't imagine. No. I can't imagine. Well, we're going to turn on Channel 2. If I okay. hear anything, I'll let you know. All right. Bye. Thanks, Joanne. 12.31 p.m. One, one. Yes, there's, a, there's a, a car here that just hit a big deer. Uh, yeah, are you passing? Wait, we're County Park. Um, this is Craig. Thanks. Andrew, you don't need an ambulance or anything. No, no. Uh, the off the road fence. No, no. The game. I mean, I mean, oh. Able to find. Yeah. Hey, this is Chris in the kitchen. Can I have S9 open, please? Sure. Thank you. Sorry. Yeah. Is there anything new? No, nothing new. Really? There's a press conference either one o'clock or one one thirty. Yeah, it's supposed to one thirty at the at Michigan Police Department. Police Department or Fire Department? At the Police Department, Marie said. Okay. Michigan. Okay, last night Jerry told me the fire department. Um, I don't know. Oh, okay. Michigan. <laughs> That'll narrow it down. <laughs> okay. Maybe they're one in the same building. Yeah, I'm not sure, but um, yeah, well, I'm Hold on the way to the Packer game. I figure I won't hear anything. Hold on a minute. Hey, Jill, can you leave that camera alone? We need to have that continuous speed on that trailer. Like it's on the trailer. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, have fun at the game. Okay, yeah, I just figured I wouldn't <laughs> hear anything. What? I figured I wouldn't hear anything after I left. So I yeah, I yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. no, nothing new. All right. Okay. Bye. kinds of registrations. Hi, this is Mark. Hey, Mark. I have yeah. all kinds of registrations. Like how many? Um, from the state, I got one, two, three, four, five, six, including a motorhome. Okay. That's on the, not so bad. On the, D, on the um, CD, I found yeah. four. And then four I got... different? What? Are they some of them the same? No. Uh-uh. And then... Um, I take that back. One was the same. Um, and then I queried that address. Yeah. And then there's also some listed to Earl, Allen, and Dolores. Okay. Run them all off and then just put them in my mailbox. I got them all done. Okay, great. Thank you. Sure. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. Good afternoon. Kelly McTony Sheriff. Hi. Is Marie there? Who? Is this Paul? No, it's Mark. Oh, you need that number? Uh, I don't know. Is she there yet or not? Yeah. It's a Randy Williams. Okay, because I don't know anything about it. I had to do something else at the time. Okay, Randy. Williams. Williams. He was there on Tuesday afternoon. Here on Tuesday afternoon. He saw some activity by the crusher that was not normal activity. I don't remember hearing. I mean, this is Channel 6, so... The call she's talking about may be on Channel 7. I don't remember or Randy Williams, but that doesn't mean anything. There's so many calls. I remember this and thinking, wait, who? But if Marie is in there on the other line building calls too, it could be on Channel 7. This, we'll just have to wait and see till the next time we uh, dive back in the, the, the next time for Channel 7. Okay, what is Randy Williams' phone number? Eight five eight four nine three six. Okay. He lives. He, he lives in Appleton. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, stuff like crusher. He saw some unusual activity in the area of the crusher, but it wasn't normal crusher activity. Okay. Okay. I'll make sure somebody contacts him right away. Okay, thank you. Thank you, bye. Channel County Sheriff's Office. Good afternoon. Um, this is Mike Wallace with the Hilbert Fire Department. Mm -hmm. um, the Hilbert Fire Department and the Hilbert First Responders and Hilbert Potter First Responders want to offer our help in that search if you need any help. Well, I tell you what, um, why don't you give the sheriff a call? I'll give you his cell phone number. Okay, one second. And that is? 418-4081. Okay. Okay? Thank you. Sure. Bye. Jumbo County Sheriff's Office. Hi, this is Kim Winnebago calling. Mm -hmm. I realize you guys are probably extremely busy. Um, we have our dive team that's assisting your county, apparently. Okay. In Manitowoc. All right. Is that where your dive team is at? That's correct. Okay. Um, do I, I need to contact one of our people, and I'm wondering who I should go through, your department or Manitowoc? Um, what, you need a message to them? or? Yeah. Okay, I can take care of it for you. Oh, that would be wonderful. Okay. I'll give you the name. It's either, um, let's see, Sergeant Fianciolo, and I'll spell that C-I-A-N-C-I-O-L-O. -O. Okay. I think this is irrelevant. Fianciolo, but... or otherwise Lieutenant Habeck, and I'll spell that H-A-B-E-C-K. Okay. And either one of them needs to contact our sergeant's desk. And they have that phone number. Okay. I guess if you need that, I can give you that. It's um, seven two three six seven three one six. Two three six seven three one six. They should know it, but in case they forget, that's what it is. Okay. All right. We'll get them the message. Okay. Thank you very much. Sure. And bye bye. Hey, Wendy. 
Oh, this is Wendy. Hey, Wendy, um, are you able to contact the Winnebago County Dive Team? Uh, yeah, I can get a hold of Gary. Okay, Gary Steyer? Yeah. Because otherwise, otherwise I can call him, too. Yeah, why don't you try him, see if oh. he answers. If you don't, give me a call back. Okay, thank you. All right, I got you bet. Bye. Well? Hey, Gary. Yeah. Are you able to contact someone from the Winnebago Dive Team? I'm with them. Okay. I need um, Sergeant Fianacola or Lieutenant Havoc to, okay. call, to call the sergeant's desk at Winnebago. Call the sergeant's desk at Winnebago. Yeah. Okay. Yes, I will, as soon as possible. Right. I will tell. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Good afternoon, Kelly McCone Sheriff. Good afternoon, this is Laura with ADC Security Services. I have a commercial burglar alarm. Okay, and where's that at? And 8421 North Shore Road. The door. Oh, there's a nice. Mine would be with who you. Can you hold a minute? Sure. 835. Hi, this is Joyce Academy. Can you hold a minute? Sure. 835. We got an, um, red, uh, burglar alarm going on. Okay, locker room. Yeah, could you? North Shore Country Club. Yeah, it's indicating the locker room. Okay, locker room. Yeah. Could you on. Talking with Dave? Okay. Three. Okay, thanks, Wayne. Yep. Oh, I'm sorry. What's Brett Cole's uh, cell phone number? Oh, six. Yeah. All right. His name is Mitsubishi Galant. 601. Thanks. Chelmacone 911. Good afternoon, Chelmacone Sheriff. Oh, hi. My name is Steve Hudson. I have an extremely, what I think is an insignificant observation. But after seeing tired uh, Jerry Pago on TV, I thought it would be call. Okay. Uh, I was canoeing on Long Lake on Thursday around 3.30, and there was like, I'm going to say four or five uh, empty detergent bottles tied together, obviously being anchored down by something on the bottom of the lake, floating, uh, they weren't floating, they were you know, obviously being caught, uh, held caught by something because they weren't being blown in the wind. You know where Long Lake is, the one that's uh, near Becker's Lake? Okay. Uh, that's all I know. Becker's, the, no, 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 no
for. Okay. Not today anymore, but very possible tomorrow. Okay. Uh, um, you can reach, would you take this number down? Okay. You can reach me tomorrow at 832-3242. Okay. Or one more number. Okay. 428-1965. Okay. And just a couple of items. Uh, we have a, a rescue truck with a light tower on it if you need lighting assistance. Okay. For, for this evening. And then also on the, on the news uh, conference, it sounded like you were uh, going into all the cars in the junkyard. Okay. We would be willing to offer our extrication tools to okay. uh, help open, open that. Car. Okay. O open cars. That sounds great. I will okay. make sure um, Jerry gets that message, okay? All right. Thank you. Sure. Goodbye. Voicemail of Sheriff Jerry Poggle. Possible. Larry Grozel, Harrison Fire Department Day, or any help vehicles. Joyce, this is Cheryl Kayser calling. Hi. Do you know if they're going to have police force tonight? I'm assuming not, but do you have any idea? Who's in charge of that? Chris Wendorf. You know, is he? Um, let's see, 8... 8.30? No, 8.38. Yeah. He's, he went home this morning. Oh, okay. As far as I know. He didn't tell me he was any place else. Okay, okay. So maybe they are. Do you want his phone phone number or his cell phone number or whatever? I've got his cell phone oh. number. I'll just leave a message down there then. Okay. Thank you, Joyce. Sure. Bye-bye. Tell me, Sheriff. Um, yes. Uh, Mantua Coney told me to call you guys. Um, I was I'm dealing with the Avery area thing in my lab. Okay. Um, my aunt's house is located there. She has two of the dogs that in the house yet, and she told her her kids to stay tomorrow. Um, they, oh, okay. They told me to contact you guys. Okay. So I'm seeing if I can at least pick up the dogs and get cold with it. Okay. Um, I'm trying to think who I should. Um, I will. Give me your name and number, and I'll get a hold of someone and have them call you. Okay. Um, so zero. And your name? Carla. 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 Carla Avery. Okay, I'll um, get a hold of someone at the scene and have them give you a call. Okay, thank you. Sure. I recognize your voice. Three oh three PM. Carla Avery. Oh, Wendy. Wendy Joyce. Yeah, I've got a call from a Carla Avery. Mhm. Mm Her aunt and or children live in one of the houses up there. Mm -hmm. They want to come in because there's the two dogs and a cat, and they also need clothing for the children. Yeah, there's a small puppy in there. Yeah. Um, do you have the number? Seven seven six. Okay. Strange she didn't mention bear. That vicious fucking dog. Okay. Did, uh, uh -huh. why, why don't you, uh, did you try um, Kelly or no. John or somebody? No, we don't really have a directive who to uh, call over there for anything. Okay, so, that's fine. I'll, I'll direct you to, if you want to call me, I can direct you to people who can answer your questions. <laughs> okay, that's that's good. That helps. Um, why don't you give... Um, Mark a call. Okay. Or if and if you don't answer, call Kelly. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Sure. You bet. Bye. Carla Avery called here. Um, Hi, this is Mark. Hey, Mark. Carla Avery called here. Um, they're wondering about getting into one of the houses at the property. There's a dog in there and a cat in there, and they also need clothes for the children. The dog and the cat were two dogs. The dog was taken yesterday. The dog and the cat were taken yesterday. That's what he says. Well, I thought Bobby had been there on the 5th to get his puppy. And was he with Barb or the cat? I don't remember. Yeah, I don't I don't think so. The cat was in the 6th video when they took over the house. Oh. Yep. I just, I'll tell you what. Um... 
Hold on. Okay. Had a paper. Somewhere I got to go. What's Carlos' phone number? Seven seven six one one nine three. And it's a Carla Avery. Carla. Yeah. I don't have a Carla. Right. She said it's her aunt that lives in one of the houses. Okay. Well, I can't let her in if it's her aunt. Well. Um, I'll call her back. Okay. Thank you. All right. Bye. What in the world? Do you have my name on that address at all? I don't know why we're getting dispatch calls. Radio. That's weird. Yep. That's fire. That's a different channel. Pause, Jack. Yeah. Do you see Hugh Fraser's question? Uh, I'm not on that screen. Just a second. I can read it to you if you want. Got it. Okay. Hi, all. Just catching up about 10 minutes behind real time. There was a mention of an unusual crusher activity. What was that about, please? From around, yeah. Well, I questioned that because... Apparently there was a call came in on another line that we haven't heard on channel six. It must be on channel seven. That apparently that Marie took about this guy Randy Williams said he observed strange or unusual activity around the crusher. That's all we know. I, I just I beg to remember listening to this call, but I, I don't remember making any connections. And I don't certainly don't remember anyone running down this Randy Williams. We heard that call tonight. Yeah. Well, we heard, th this guy called in and wanted to talk to Marie, and then Joyce, but Joyce, fed, huh. Joyce, fed, Joyce fed him the information of what, of what Marie, I guess Marie had wrote it down about this Randy Williams. Okay. It was I, actually I think it was Weird that called back, wanting to know. Danny didn't catch it either. Oh, good, Danny. I'm not losing my mind. <laughs> just spacing out, I guess. <laughs> uh, it, it can happen with these calls, you know. It, yeah. It becomes monotonous. And I, I really don't understand, as you guys have seen here, we just got a number of, um, this is Channel 4, but typically, uh, well, it, it changed. Some days were different. Some Most days, Channel 4 was Gold Cross, which is the ambulance service. And it seemed like the fire fire department was, I don't know, Channel 8 or 9, something like that. I, I don't know why it's on here. Hmm. Uh, but we're up to, well, these are pretty close in a row. Uh, Ten minutes to four in the afternoon. So oh. anyway, well, I, who would I, be I guess... able to see the crusher? Well, I mean, there were people on the property that morning, you know. Did they have to open the crusher up to see what was crushed in the via, in the actual crusher when they did a search? Um, well, if it's clamped down, you know, um, if you cl if you crush one, and and you're not going to crush anything else, I would imagine you just leave the crusher uh, head down, and then you know they pancake three or four cars together, depending on how big they are. Steven so, did crush that blue car on the fourth, right? Right. And the left it in there. The one that was in Doc's slideshow yesterday? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Got, he, he, but he had other things to attend to, so he just left it in there. And, and again, they pancake several cars together, typically. 
Uh -huh. So, anyway. Maybe, Kenneth, that, you're... maybe he was out there on the 4th and saw Stephen crush that. I don't know. Maybe. We, we didn't, until we get to that call on probably the 7th. I, I don't remember that, but maybe we get this uh, to the 7th and we'll hear Marie uh, have this conversation with this person. Well, let's wait and see. All right, here we go. Moving on. There's Torment. Uh, hi, I'd like to um, report a mailbox that was vandalized last Moving night. Moving on. I was out of town. Bye. Hello, Sheriff's Office. Can I help you? Uh, yes, my name is Adam Malitsky, and I'm down at the uh, Maribel case. Uh, looking for Tina Halbach. Okay. Or, I'm sorry, Teresa Halbach. Yes. And uh, in one of the caves, we had found a sock. Okay. And you're in the Maribel Cave? We're in the Maribel County Park. Maribel County Park. Okay. And you're in one of the caves? Uh, well, now we're up by the parking lot. Okay. There was a there was a sock, and then we saw some sort of synthetic fiber on one of the rocks. Okay. Bag. Okay. Could you hold on, Adam? Sure thing. You said your name was Lewinsky. Lewinsky. L, E, W, I, T, Z is in zebra, K, E. Okay. Just hold on a minute, could you? Yep. Go ahead. Go ahead, you have a seventeen. Uh, yes, my name is Dan. That's really strange. Is that one of those things that Back into radio trans call. I don't. I don't understand. Five four three two one. Test for eighteen hundred dollars. Can I have a chair? Can I help you? Yeah, Ray. Nobody reached you. Why news? Yeah, Ray. That call that, that, that this guy called in about Marable Case, that's it. That's all we hear, and it's just gone. And he asked that guy to hang on, so they removed the rest of that call. You guys notice that? Roger Lutisky? Yeah. Lutisky, yeah. Something like that, yeah. Did they transfer it, maybe? Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. We know that Colin was the one that went to... And... They didn't come no. back and say, I'm going to transfer you or anything. No, nothing. Uh, but we know that Colburn is the one that went to Marable Case. Right. I just, yep. again, we got this black hole that looked bad to me. I don't want to put out a bunch of innuendo, but why not? Why didn't we hear the rest? It immediately jumps into, uh, after a short period there, into these radio transmissions for some unknown reason that have nothing to do that have nothing to do with that call anyway we're up to 
Oh, hell, we better have made a big jump. It is 6.58 p.m. So we made a pretty huge, uh, about a, because we were at, uh, going on, only going on fours, and we're almost 7 o'clock now. So, moving on. Moving on. Jerry Poggle checking with you. He told us to call after 7 o'clock. He um, is leaving the uh, crime scene shortly. Yes. Yeah, I just left it myself, and he's on his way down. So uh, I can... Is Donald being back to Chilton? What's that? Is Donald being back to Chilton? Yeah, he's heading back here. Yeah, so he said we should check back after 7 o'clock to see if there is any... Uh, Another news conference call for tomorrow morning based on what they may have found between the time I left Fisher Cut at Oh, okay. I'm not aware. Uh, I left before the uh, meeting was over with, so I'm not sure if they're doing a news conference or not. Yeah, I hang on. I love oh, your hang on. I got dispatcher here telling me. Press conference at this right in front of tomorrow at 3 p.m. 3 p.m. tomorrow. Okay. At the Michigan Fire Department. Oh, another one at 3 o'clock tomorrow afternoon? Yeah. That yep. means they didn't make very much progress uh, this afternoon and early this evening. Nothing's really changed. I can say that for sure. It's, yeah. it's, we're still looking. Yeah, Jerry, Jerry said check back after 7 o'clock to see if we're going to go in the morning or in the afternoon. Yeah, no, nope, they said it for 3 o'clock, Scott. Just said. 3 o'clock, okay. Yep. And, but especially now, there's nothing, nothing over and above with Jerry and, and uh, uh, not, not, it's, no, it's Bob, uh, Bob Herman. Bob. Yeah. Not, nothing new there, huh? No, nothing, none that I'm aware of. Very good. Thank you. Right. Bye. Bye. Yeah, it's Kelly. Hey, Kelly. Now, you're going to want to wear uh, a good quality waterproof boot. Okay. And uh, warm clothing. And maybe even just bring, you know, an extra set of clothing along. Okay. All right. Wait, it's just casual clothing. Oh, hang on. Oh, yeah, if you got like an Olsen PD jacket or something. Okay. Some some law enforcement ID, you know, Nolting, anything for Nolting or Okay, yeah, because I talked to Jeff last night, and he said that was okay. So. Okay, yeah. That's the only way you're going to get through the roadblocks. Okay. All right. I'll do it. We'll catch uh, you, man. Anthony, that's your department at 7? Yeah, come up here, and most are leaving at 7. I'll probably be up there by then, but most, you know, if you're up here by 6 or you're not here by 7, that's fine, but okay. uh, about that time, all right? All right, sounds Bye. good. Bye. Jason Quill, I'm Chilton Police. Hi, Jason. Hi. This is Pamela Holtz calling. Um, I just took the kids home, and they're, they're trying to take them home, and they don't want to go because they're afraid of Rick. They don't want to be there. All he does is scream at them, and I don't know what to do. Moving on. He's screaming at the top. He's screaming at us. But that's between. He's just upset, and he didn't take it. He got all and everything from home, and he's sick and thumbs up, screaming. When the we really need to the cops and also bring my video. You know, right now you need to do that. You need to um then you need to get in the car not really you know from the court 'cause Well no, I know that dear. I'm just saying there's no seven oh seven oh five PM witnesses and falling out and she cried and um and you feel you know, there are kids right tonight. Bag violating the court order. We're almost done. Not going to get many more calls. Kelly, my county sheriff's department. Yes, county is done. Yes. There is no drone mobile out here. All right, we'll give them a call at home. And now we've jumped from 7.05 to 11. I see. What the hell? Yeah, 11.20. But we've jumped three hours and 15 minutes without a call on here, on this channel. I find that really strange. I can't put anything with it, other, I mean, other than my, like, what the hell? I mean, they, they've had calls pretty much at least a few per hour. And now we go for a three hour and 20 minute stretch and there's not a call. Uh, make yeah, what you will. Yeah. Make what you, yeah. Yeah, we don't have many, um, 252. Yeah, we're we're 20 seconds away from this being over. So let's let's finish it up. Um, sorry. Okay. Bye. That might be the last call, actually. Nope. Looks like we got a dial tone.
afternoon to come to the uh, crime scene tonight. I, I was told so. Joe? Yes. Hey, it's Connie. Are you coming into work? I, I was told this afternoon to come to the uh, crime scene tonight, and apparently they made a decision and didn't tell me that I was supposed to go on patrol tonight. Oh, okay. So it sounds like I'm staying out here because I don't have a uniform or anything, so. Okay. And then um, is someone coming in at 3? I think Chris is going to end up back in the county for patrol tonight. Oh, okay. So. Okay. We were just wor- we were worried about you. Yeah, well, I appreciate it. Okay. All right, so, thanks. That's all it. All right, sure. Mm-hmm. Bye. Bye-bye. That is it. That's really strange that it made that big of a jump and there's not a call on Channel 6. With all the calls that had been rolling in, then boom, nothing. No, thank you. Not even any personal calls. Nope. Very weird. Very weird. I'll be interested to see also this Randy Williams. Uh, I don't know. I don't want to. I don't want to put too much with it. Okay, let's get this off the screen. Where are you at? There we go. Okay. Anybody got? Uh, any any weird things they want to mention, talk about, questions that uh, I may have missed here? There may be something here. Jay had a question in the private chat here. Yeah, I see. Okay. Yep. Okay, we've got Becca's. Um, Jay, this was 645. Is he making this up like the website call that he knew about? was on Teresa's memorial page. Uh, you must have me talk about that earlier call. I, I, I don't know, Jay. I don't know. And, you know, I can understand them removing the, the message, but deleting it from their... This I'm talking about the really nasty message that was left on her memorial page. They deleted it completely. And whereas the webmaster could have ran that down, like it have gotten the IP address of who sent it, and that didn't happen. Okay, just got another question, Corey, for you. If a fireman found the place in that car, what what the chances the convo was caught on the fire fire brigade radio link? Um, maybe. I haven't heard that. Um, I mean, they're out there as volunteers. It wasn't really a fire call, uh, but it is possible. I mean, yeah, they wouldn't have the frequencies are different, so they wouldn't necessarily have access to, you know, using their portable if they took them with them to be able to call, you know, say, hey, I need an investigator uh, on the Calumet frequency. That's possible. I've not personally listened to, you know, all the uh, fire department and emergency services. I've listened to a lot of them, but I mean, they're just normal calls for them. Nothing to do with the actual cases themselves, but they're part of the that that whole, that CD that came. So you know, we just copied everything and put it together basically like it is on the CD. It's possible though, Jay. So, um, question, TJ, what day was S.A. actually charged, yeah, was charged with her, her murder? Yeah, it was the 15th. Doc is correct. That's actually when uh, they arrested him on the 9th on the gun charge and then the 15th is when um, Avery was charged with the murder and the other stuff 
Yep. 15. Um, seems so odd that so much has been cut out from the catalogs. Several hours worth. Yeah, Don, I, I can't explain it. I, you know, it's, you, you just, for me to just sit here and say they, they've they edited, you know, a bunch of stuff out of here without proof is really not fair, but it is, I can't explain it. And we're still really early in the investigation. And for three hour, three plus hours to be that we can see this gap. There was also a gap earlier. Uh, not quite as bad as this, but, you know, again, we went from basically around three o'clock to around seven o'clock. We had a few, those dispatch calls in there, radio transmissions that were, had nothing to do with anything. Then all of a sudden we're at seven o'clock and then all of a sudden we're at 1120. <laughs> it's like, what the hell, what the hell are you people doing, man? Uh, five days later, five days later, uh, and they've already solved the case. Well, TJ is, you know, we heard the way Joyce was talking early on and several people calling in. It's like they had him guilty. I mean, he, they had him. Very crazy 40 acre junkyard. You know, he's, he's got, you know, several properties and they had him guilty. Everybody that heard where the vehicle was found, they were all like, oh. Uh, yeah. Can you, can you believe it? Can you believe it? Can you believe it? Exactly. They had him. They had him convicted. He was nailed. Immediately. He owns everything out there. Right. It's all him. <laughs> Right. He owned everything. It's all his. His fault. Kay wants to know if you can do a request for those three hours of missing calls. Well, you know, I thought about just making a request for all of it without the edits. <laughs> yeah. And hurt, right? Well, yeah. I mean, I doubt they'll give it to me, but... I'm you should start see. with just those three hours to see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was really strange because you guys could see. I mean, I didn't, you know, rattle off every call the time, but I tried to stay within, you know, when I saw it was a, a, a jump, I tried to watch. And uh, I noticed it right away. I remember noticing it long time when, you know, we got the call. Um, it's crazy. You know, now that it's, it's different people, you might just get the actual file. Well, I've had so much problems getting anything from Calumet. Um, I, I imagine I'm going to be met with a brick wall. I mean, you know, it's just, it's not, it's just, it's even things that uh, have already been released. Like that Brendan, that ride that Brendan took with um, Fassbender and Weger when they picked him up from school on March 1st is that you know Sheree was finally able to get I couldn't get it but then come to find out that recall had uh, that recording had been released in 2019 maybe 2018 I, I don't know exactly I can't really find that out but at least four years prior that had been requested and released and I'm going you know it took um uh, it took over a year for me to get it, and I had and Cherie had to do it for me. It, it's ridiculous. That's why you know I I finally just wrote the I don't know what good it'll do. I wrote the Governor Evers about the problems with their open records request uh, law. It's not being followed at all. Uh, the two that I'm dealing with, Manitowoc has been pretty responsive. Now I haven't requested anything from them in months, but. Uh, Major Cummings has been, he's very, they're very quick to address them. Maybe uh, you I should ask him for the, for the calls on the 4th. <laughs> I did. Uh, I've, I've already asked him. And the response? Don't have them. Don't exist. 
<laughs> yep. Yep. Green Bay has always been responsive. I've, I've requested a few things from them. Bam, they're on it. And typically wrapped up before 10. Even a week has passed by if they, you know, if there's not a. I had them do a couple of search. I did a couple of search requests. And they're very quick about responding. responding. But Calumet, forget it. The DOJ, forget it. It's, it's like talking to, uh, you're talking to a vacuum. It's, uh, you know, they think, I guess, if by ignoring you, that you'll just go away. And I'm, I won't. Pretty frustrating, though. Anyway, I did get a response from the uh, Governor Evers' office that said that, uh, basically, you know, blah, 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 thanks for writing and reporting this. Uh, I'm going, there's going to, going to be looking auto more into reply. this. And, well, I, I don't know if it was necessarily an auto reply because they said they would be looking more in depth into the, in this and they would be contacting me again at a later date. We'll see. I, I don't know. I can't imagine I'm the first person with, because the reason I say this, you know, that I told you guys that, uh, you know, I contacted a lawyer. Um, it's been well, been well over a year ago now. Uh, in regards to uh, not being able to get certain requests fulfilled, uh, denials, and and just all the problems. Anyway, uh, I subscribe to his newsletter, and at least once, or, whenever he has a case, or there's a case that gets reported, uh, and one. In Wisconsin, concerning open records and whatever, he posted it in his newsletter. And I can tell you, because I forwarded it to a bunch of you guys, uh, there have been several that have, they, you know, these various counties and cities have lost because they're, they're breaking the open records request requirements and law. So we'll see. Pretty frustrating, though. Uh, Pete Moss has got a question. Is there not? an ombudsman you can complain to. Yeah, I don't know how they work that exactly. I mean, other than the mandamus, I think ombudsmen are mentioned uh, in that. But I have worked online for um, like some specific department that you would report these issues to, and there doesn't seem to be one. I can't find it. The closest I found was at the governor's office. I'm just talking about, you know, problems with uh, various state or, you know, whatever offices that uh, you need to report a problem with. You know, I don't want I don't want to sue anyone. I don't want to take anyone to court. I just want them to do what's required uh, per their own statute. I'm not asking for anything above that. I don't want their money. Yeah, I don't want anything like that. Just either grant the request or deny it and tell me why you're denying the request. Just ignoring what, it. Yeah. What is the reason that they haven't released all those photos? I mean, did they give um, a reason? Well, I mean, the last um, time that I requested, I mean, it's been a long time that I requested, uh, you know, oddball photos. Um I've gotten a couple of different uh, responses as for the denial. You need to be more specific. What's in the photographs? Well, if I knew what was in the photographs, I you know I, I would tell you. But until I see them, I can't explain. Well, I don't Cass know. Road. Cass Road and the uh, wooden yeah. pallet, peat moss bag. Peat moss bag. Yeah. Um, well, you know, the one request I made of that Dan Dan Block that worked for the city police, he uh, he took 207, six, seven photos. Weigert tells me that the CD is degraded and the, those photos can't be can't be retrieved. Oh, and I've went on. to every I've even I, I've even request. That's another request that I have with the DOJ because I'm 100 percent positive they got a copy of all that stuff. I've requested a copy of those photos through them. They've not, I, you know, I got the standard response, but anything beyond that, no answer, no reply. And I've asked for several status updates, nothing. 
And then uh, the, the other uh, um, excuse that they give about photos is uh, when you give them, you know, what's in the discovery file. If this is an exhibit, you need to contact the Manitowoc County Clerk's Office. Well, I don't know if it's an exhibit. <laughs> I have no idea. And though if you look at the exhibit list, the official one, it's a handwritten whatever. Most of the photos are just listed as photo. It doesn't give anything, nothing as to how to reference it. Not even yeah. it gives it a, a it give you. I mean, it'll be listed as the exhibit number, but it doesn't tell you uh -huh. what that photo is. It just says photo. You can look through the yeah. exhibit list. It's available. Right. Yeah, it's pretty. Uh, That's it's pretty ridiculous. Infuri it, it is ridiculous. <laughs> Stuart King. <laughs> Requests from people that had their amygdalas hijacked. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's pretty funny. That was a, uh, uh, should be in the highlight reel for Cam, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Maybe I will look up Ombudsman, uh, Pete. That, that, that's not a bad idea. I'm not, I know they have them. I just don't know exactly what their function is within the state. And, you know, the mandamus thing is ridiculous. You know, I know him, Barry went through it and it took him 20 years. months to get a reply. Tw took him 20 months, almost two years to get a reply to his mandamus complaint. So anyway, all right, we've been at it. We're, pushing three hours so i think that's long enough uh the next time we do these we'll be still on the sixth we'll be doing channel seven I, it's been a long time since i've listened to these so i mean i've listened to pieces and parts but you know I, I i can't remember what all's in it um but it should be a different uh, at least in part a different dispatcher i'm really curious about this randy williams and what he observed around the crusher Weird, whatever the hell. Anybody got anything else they want to add? Susan, JK, Cherie? Not I. I'm good. Ready? Have dinner. No, I'm good. Me yeah. too. I got pork. I got I got pork chops and mac and cheese. Um, num num. Some kind of zucchini and something. I'm not exactly sure what that is, but whatever. Um, I'm gonna eat the hell. Of, I'm gonna eat it. I'm gonna eat it. Whatever it is. I had hardaway <laughs> pizza. Yeah, me. Yeah, you 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 bragged on that before. I love hardaway pizza. We don't have that here. Uh, Never heard of it. It originated in Stillwater, Oklahoma. I don't know if the, it's regional or just in Oklahoma. I so. Yeah. Uh, I bet it's regional. Uh, yeah. Or anyway, riveting. Thank you, Stuart. Um, you know, it's a um... <laughs> literal jackhammer. I like that, Stuart. There's <laughs> <laughs> some knowledge. It's just really infuriating that, you know, I just know in the position that I worked uh, in the profession that I was in, if you didn't do your job, you, you got your ass in a real jam. You know, you, you, uh, you got a write up or got your ass chewed out. You know, it could, you know, it could result in you not getting a raise. Uh, you know, you could be suspended or even terminated, you know, um, there were consequences to actions and here there, there are none it's like i don't have to answer you and there's really not anything you can do about it except force you know force me to spend thousands of dollars to hire a lawyer <laughs> it's just stupid man and i know i'm not the only one i've heard from other people i'm not going to name them i've heard from other people that request stuff and they're having issues too especially from the two departments that I, I named and it's not right so 
Yeah, you're very welcome. Uh, anybody got anything else? Okay, Jay. Um, okay, you said you have, you're having that wonderful pizza, Jay. Anything? No, I'm all right at the moment. Just uh, not much to ask, really. Yep. Yep. Interesting. Interesting. You know the whole premise around these calls and uh, what we take away from it. Missing three hours, boom, just jump, it's gone. That was really weird. And the prior to that, another couple hours, boom, gone. They've um, obviously got something they don't want to show you. Well, it it makes me think that when there's this big gap in time. Uh, Cherie, anything? She may have stepped away. All righty. What's that? What's that? Yeah. I'm sorry. Her I'm daughter sorry, is there. She did oh, step Oh, okay. Yep. Okay. Okay. Well, with that, I'm going to make this big. I'm going to thank everyone for coming and listening in. Good questions. Good uh, good advice. And I'm not, I'm not sure if we'll jump in and try to finish the deposit. No, we can't finish because she stays so long. At least get started. But we got a couple more depositions. I want to get those done. Um, we'll see what, what floats my boat the next time we're here. Appreciate everyone coming and listening in, uh, you know, giving the channel support, um, like and share and subscribe if you're so inclined that I'll say have a wonderful evening. And this has been a five play production.